Hi, everybody. I'm Bree, and this is Rock from Rolling with Rock, joining me as Hello. my special guest tonight. Welcome to the Lucky Dog live stream. We are going to be playing a couple of games tonight. We're playing uh, Small Islands, and it's a wonderful world on, uh, well, one on uh, Board Game Arena, one on Game Park. And I'm going to be teaching both of these games to my friend Rock, and then we're yes. going to be playing them together uh, this weekend on his stream on the, uh, the Tabletop Live Network. Uh, I actually wanted to take a couple of minutes before we did that. Actually, before we do anything else, I wanted to make sure, uh, see if anybody is out there and make sure anyone can hear us. Can you hear us? Well, I can tell you that. Uh, Sound is coming through on Twitch. Excellent, glad to hear that. Uh, Okay, so yeah, tell us, let us know out there if you, uh, in chat, if you can hear us. And before we get started, I did want to share a little bit. I know that a lot of you are interested in our uh, recent press release, our announcement about the uh, Sherlock Case Connection game. So I wanted to take a minute to share a little bit about that. Uh, so you have probably seen our, uh, our, our new game, Sherlock Case Connection. Uh, which has been announced as a Q2 retail release. We're super excited about. And I wanted to tell you a little bit more about it. So a few things that maybe haven't been revealed before. Uh, so this is a partnership with the BBC. Uh, Sherlock uh, Case Connection will be a game, a uh, puzzle uh, deduction game for two to four players. It's competitive uh, and it's based on the TV show, obviously that you can see here. Uh, and here, this is actually the back of the box. Hi, Raven, welcome. Uh, so here you can see uh, that you, uh, when you're playing Sherlock Case Connection, you're actually going to be visiting locations uh, using your, uh, your evidence to connect threads and using, uh, once as you connect threads, you'll score them to uh, you'll connect multiple threads uh, to Sherlock's to Sherlock's foes to score points. Uh, so you can see here that you've got locations, uh, you've got various threads. They're connected by the evidence uh, evidence markers, and as you untangle them and and race against your competitors to do so, uh, you'll score points. And and when you reach the end of the game, the uh, detective who has untangled the most leads will become the next great detective. So we'll have more to share about that as we uh, as we get closer to the release. And I'm looking forward to showing you that game once I have a copy in my own hands. Yeah. Uh, hi, Legends DM. Thanks for joining us. Thanks and, for stopping uh, by, Legends. Yeah. Glad to have you. So uh, if you want to take a second to uh, to introduce yourself, Rock. Sorry to uh, to jump over that and give no, the uh, the exciting fine. news first, but yeah, absolutely. That's I mean that might as well get hit a hit a home run right off the bat. Uh, hello, friends. My name is Rock. I'm from Rolling with Rock on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Rolling with Rock. I am a board game and video game streamer where I usually stream six nights a week around 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I play games on the computer, Steam, like Fall Guys, Rocket League. Uh, just started a playthrough of Wildermyth, as well as uh, games on the Nintendo Switch. Primarily Pokemon games. I have been playing a ton of Pokemon Legends Arceus. And then we do both digital board games, uh, stuff like apps also from Steam, uh, and browser-based games like Board Game Arena, which is what we're going to be doing today. Uh, and then I do physical stuff on my tabletop as well that you can see right over to my right. So we do a lot of that. Like I said, stream about six nights a week. I am a member of the Tabletop Live Network. And talking about Tabletop Live Network, on this Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, Bree is going to come over to my channel. Uh, so we're doing a little dual collaboration here. And while tonight we are going to be learning how to play, or at least I'm going to be learning how to play Small Islands and It's a Wonderful World, uh, on Saturday, we are going to do full playthroughs of the games, and that will be very exciting because that will be part of the Tabletop Live Network's February celebration. 
<laughs> Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, we're getting raided by Steph. Ah, hi, Steph. What gamer uh, Steph is really a part of 16? Thank you so much, Thank Steph. You. Thank you. Hi, Steph. Hi, Dr. Sign. Hi, Weird Guy of Games. Hi, Time. Uh, don't let him in. <laughs> <laughs> he said bye already, so. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was talking about Weird Guy. He's, oh, he's oh good, never mind. A, never mind. They're all, they're all good friends. They're all, they're all good friends, but I, I, <laughs> I tease Weird Guy. He's a, he's a really good guy, actually. <laughs> Hello, and, friends. And, Welcome in, and, everybody. And, Thank you so Linker much for that. Raid. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm saying that right, but uh, but welcome to all of you. Thank you for raid. Thank you for the raid, Steph. <laughs> Glad to have you. You were uh, you were playing Isla and something shiny over on your stream, right? How did that go? Yeah, it's early for Steph to be yeah. done streaming. Tonight. This was a special night. She uh, she played Isla and this and something shiny solo on her oh, stream. Oh, nice. I, a, I wish I would have been able to catch your Tuesday stream. Very cool stuff. Thank you so much for that raid. Yeah. Welcome in, friends. We are going to be playing uh, Small Islands on Board Game Arena. And it's a wonderful world on Game Park. Well, we're going to be... Uh, Bree is going to be teaching me how to play those games. Because Oops. this Saturday on TLN at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, we'll be playing both of those games on my channel over at Rolling With Rock on Twitch. So thank you so much for that raid. I hope you guys have fun. Uh, Legends, yes. Black Queen, uh, Legend, Lucky Duck Games EN equals Black Queen Bird equals Bree. That's right. <laughs> thank you. Many, thank many you, great uh, names, one great person. <laughs> sorry for all the jumping around here. I'm working on getting the uh, the Small Islands stream, or the, the Small Islands window shared so that we can, <laughs> so that we can play that on this stream for you tonight yes. uh but yes legends dm i am blackwing bird who you've talked to many times in chat uh and this is the lucky dumb lucky ducks games en which is our english uh channel on this is currently streaming to facebook youtube and twitch uh so yes thank you steph please make sure to follow lucky duck games i appreciate that uh we will definitely be streaming more to all of these channels soon David Lockwood, thank you for being here. I'm so, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, so yes, let me get this. Uh, let me get this shared. There we go. Ta-da! Okay, yes, <laughs> that's much better. Much, much better. Are you ready to get started? I am. I'm already in the game. All right. <laughs> Let me just I'm ready to learn up. small islands. All right. Well, in that case, let's get started. Woo. Okay. So for anyone who's not already familiar with small islands, uh, this is a game of, uh, well, to give you some, to give you the, the overview come, coming straight uh, really straight from the rule book. Uh, so since the beginning of time, humans have lived in harmony along the coast of the great continent. Hostile flora and fauna have made great inland exploration impossible, but gradually the clans have turned to the sea and acquired new knowledge regarding nature, sun, and the wind. Recently, a few courageous explorers discovered a magnificent archipelago far across the immense blue sea filled with vital resources. Your clan's leaders have selected you to represent your clan. Explore the heart of these newly discovered islands. Seek out natural resources and the temples of an ancient civilization and bring back wealth and prestige for your clan from these many islands, the small islands. So your goal in this game is to explore these islands and you'll do so by revealing tiles one at a time or placing tiles one at a time from your hand. And... At the end of each round, which will be a scoring, there will be a scoring phase, uh, in during which each player will score for uh, potentially for different uh, different objectives based on what's in their hand. So you can see on the left here, it it shows my ob objective where it says that I need to choose one for the current round and another to be reserved. 
and it says player's right. objective hand on the left. Now we're playing with the basic rules for this game. Okay. Uh, and the basic rules use, see how these show, like when I mouse over this and it pops up this mission and reward and it's combined onto a single card. Yes. Uh, in the advanced rules, which I genuinely recommend for most hobby gamers in your first or game or after playing this once, uh, these are actually separated onto two different cards. So okay. in the in in the basic game, there these are combined onto a single card. So you get a mission, and in this case, the mission is houses on islands where there are more flowers than fruits. And so I can't point at this with my mouse without <laughs> without making the card disappear. But the pink, uh, the pink icon, which shows, which is the large icon in the middle of the, the left side of the card. Yep. Do you see mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. That is, that's the flower icon. And then the okay. small okay. orange icon that's still below it and to the right is the fruit okay. icon. I have a so, similar and, one, but I have a leaf more than flowers. Okay. So, and we wouldn't necessarily know what right. objective each other person is working towards. And as we're working our way through the round, you're going to be trying to create islands that have, that meet those criteria. Okay. Because at the end of the round, you'll be able to place a clan house, one clan house per island on as many islands as meet the criteria of your mission. Oh, okay. Bearing in mind, however, that each island can only ever have one of your clan house color on it. So once okay. you've placed your clan house color on that island, you won't be able to place on that island again for the rest of the game. So if you might want, if like if you think you might want to score that island for some other objective in the future, you may block yourself from doing that okay. by placing on it at the beginning of the game. Okay, so this one is allows you to place a clan house on any island where there are strictly more flowers than fruits. And what that means is if there are the same number of flowers as fruits, you can't place there. That's strictly more means it ha cannot be equal. It must be actually more. Okay. If you then place a, flick, a clan house on that island you get the reward that's on the other side of the card, on the right-hand side of the card. And the reward, it's it's shown in icons on the cards, and this is also in the physical game, uh, but on the bottom of, of the uh, the section in on Board Game Arena, it also shows, the, it, like it, it translates it for you into text. So what it means is you get one uh, prestige point, one PP per flower, on that island and just two flat prestige points. Okay. So let's say there were three flowers and two fruits. So you could place a clan house there. You would get then one prestige point per flower. So three points plus two for placing a, a clan house on that island. So you would get five points at the end of that round for this mission. Does that make sense? Uh, I think so. So, I mean, that's, you're gonna be building islands out here on these, you're gonna be placing tiles to build islands. And then when you have, at the end of the round, you'll you'll have a scoring opportunity and you'll place a clan house and you'll have a chance to score it. And if that's the mission that you're working towards, that's how you'll score. Okay. You'll, you'll place, clan houses on islands that meet this criteria and you'll get that and you'll get points based on that scoring system. Okay. Uh, and so you have currently, you'll have three options to choose from and I'll have three options to choose from. Normally these would be kept secret. I'd say in this game, because we're, this is a learning game and we're not necessarily going to do a full playthrough. It makes sense for us to just, talk through them and potentially okay, yeah. decide between us what they what the best choice would be because not only are you choosing one right now to play for this round but you see how it says at the top for my turn you must choose one for the current round and another to be reserved right because i'll choose one to keep 
and one to play and one to discard. The one that I keep will be part of the three that I choose from next round. Oh, okay. So you can, you, if you had, if you were like, oh man, I really want to be able to play both of these, you're able to, you just have to carry one right. over to the next so round. So next round, I will have the opportunity to play, to choose one of these again. And maybe next round, I decide that was a bad plan. I'm just going to abandon that and I discard it. Or I could keep it again for the following round, or I could play it. But it just gives me the opportunity to, to plan ahead a little bit. Okay. So do you want to talk through one of the ones on your side? Yeah. So um, like I said, the first one I had was Leafs more than flowers. Okay. Uh, the next one that I have is uh, you may place a house on any island if there is at least one of the three possible ties between two resources. So that's say So if, as, if flowers and fruit, flowers and leaves or fruit and leaves are equal i can place a house on them and then there the last one is you may place a house on an island if there are at least two ports one flower one fruit and one leaf that sounds complicated <laughs> it can be and and the thing about those is that as you get further along in the game there will be four rounds of placing tiles so as we get further along in the game it gets easier to achieve some of the goals that have bigger requirements because you get you have islands that have started to form over the course of the game that have more resources on them uh, okay. that have that have already kind of where you where you can see like oh that already meets my requirements or it's already very close to meeting my requirements uh, and okay. and also i won't necessarily know what you're going for so it's it will be difficult for me to know like oh right. he's trying to make all of these things equal so it's harder for me to say like, oh, I'm going to try to mess with that, right? I'm, I could do it by accident, but because these are secret objectives, I wouldn't be easily able to, to just like, oh, I'm going to play a tile here and it's just going to break your plan. 100%. I understand that. Um, it, it, it will still happen. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it's much harder to do that sort of thing on purpose. Where, um, how many tiles per round are we going to place? Uh, so that actually varies and okay. we'll come to that. But the only reason okay. I focused on, and, and normally in a teach, I wouldn't actually focus on the objectives first because it's easier to explain them once you see how the tiles play. But because of the way that the playthrough works, yeah. I have to choose this first before we can yeah. move on to the next thing. Uh, so I wanted to show that before I do anything. So I'm just going to choose the, ter the top option as my first one. Um, and, uh, and my second option as my reserve, and then it should have passed the turn over to you. Yes, I board gamer stuff. I cannot blame you for loving yummy, mm -hmm. yummy, 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 yummy monster tummy. It's such a fun one to just pull out and play on short notice and it doesn't take very long and you can get just about anyone to play it. I've played it with kids as young as five and friends as old as in their seventies <laughs> with, without kids as young as five in the game <laughs> and, and had people equally entertained the whole time. I've been really amazed at the wide variety of audiences that game is absolutely enjoyable for okay so now that we've both chosen our uh our objectives for this round uh the game is prompting me to draw a tile and the uh the steps that happen at this point will be uh that i will draw a i will choose a tile from the three face up tiles on the right Okay. Uh, but you can see there are three options and they're all actually very similar to one another. Uh, <laughs> and you can, there's like turtles and, and fish that you can see in the artwork. Those actually don't have a bearing on, uh, on the gameplay. The okay. things that do matter are the edges, obviously, like any other tile laying game, the edges have to match up with what you're, t what they're touching when you place them on the board. Uh, and then the icons on 
the uh, on the land. So you've got temples, the little red temples. You've also got this space, this little dotted line square, which is actually a place where you'll be able to build a clan house. It's like a building, a building yes. location. That's, uh, I, yeah, and so there are a limited number of those on each island, which can matter because the order that we place our clan houses in uh, at the end of the round matters significantly. And okay. that also when you ask how many tiles get placed per round, those two things go together because see how there's these, these ships over here to the left yes. of the tiles. So each of us has one color, what one ship over here that's, a t that's uh, connected to our color, right? Our player okay. color. Uh, at any time, once this stack of six tiles that are face down right here at the top of the little three has run out. So when, like when I choose one of these, it will get replaced from the stack of six. Okay. At any point after this stack has run out, either of us can place our color of, uh, of ship to end the round. Oh. And once that ship is placed, it will stay there for the rest of the game. Uh, and there's some special scoring associated with where that ship is placed. So you choose or I choose when the game, when, when the round ends. But it's there will the always, all four ends. of them will always be there. I'm sorry? I said, it's the game that never ends. <laughs> well, but the thing is that it does end because okay. they all, because there are only the four ships. And they stay where they are. So once you place them, they don't go back. Okay. So you place you place the ship, and it stays uh, in the in the spot that it's in. It's just that the round doesn't end until someone chooses to play a ship. Uh, okay. The uh, all four it. ships are always in play, whether you have four players or not. And the, okay. you have the option when you place your ship, uh, you can place, so these are, these are double-sided. And so okay. for a two player game, we'll have, I think you're yellow and I'm red here. So we'll have the yellow and red ships and the other two will be flipped over so that they're gray. Okay. Normally in a four player game, these would be colored the same colors as the other players and everybody would only have access to one. Okay. You can choose to play your own color or one of the gray ships, but at the end of the game, you will only get end game scoring for your colored ship. That makes sense. You can end the round by playing a gray ship. Okay. And ending but the round can't, like ending the round early can potentially be strategic if you think like you've gotten the most you can get for your own objective and your opponent has the opportunity to get more out of what they are, whatever sense. they're building for. Yeah, that makes okay, sense. Okay, so on my turn, I have two tiles in my hand. I choose a third one from the ones that are out here on display. And I will choose this one. It will get replaced, but it doesn't get replaced yet. Okay. So now I have three tiles in my hand, and then I choose one to place on the board. And none of these are especially good for me. <laughs> so I will do... And similar that. to other tile laying games, you have to make the land match the land and the yes. water match the water. Exactly. So the edges of your tile do have to match up the the, the sides of the Is uh, it the possible land to have three up. tiles that just don't work at all? Or I've never seen it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I do I I know there are it is possible to not be I do think there I've never seen it happen but I do think uh, if you can't place the ship tile like if the because the ship tiles have no land 
They have to be on, able to against water. They have to be able to go up against water. So, like, right now, there are only two legal spots to place right. a tile. To place a three. ship tile. Three. Uh, I only see two. The top. Oh, yeah, there's three. Uh, yeah, I see. Right I, I wasn't and... looking at the top. You're absolutely yeah. right. So, yeah, there's three. If there wasn't one, then you just cannot. Sh you cannot land. You can't land. end around. <laughs> the, 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 round, the, the, the action is called land, right? It's, okay. it's landing if you play the ship. You are not allowed to do it if you can't legally place that tile. Okay. So what the game is prompting me to do right now is playing a... Uh, what's, uh, I don't actually remember. A bonus token. Okay. So we each have four bonus tokens, but they're double-sided, which is why they show up and why it looks like we have eight. Okay, yes. Uh, this is your supply of bonus tokens for the whole game. Okay. But you can use them at any point on any turn. And when you use them, they cover a token or a printed uh, uh, icon on the board. Oh. So, for example, this one that I'm uh, in the upper left of my... Uh, board right now or of my of my scoring yes. section right now shows a port on the left and a uh i was gonna say flower the upper right corner one says a flower yeah. on the right uh this one is a, a port and a fruit uh so i could potentially use this for example to add a flower to one of the islands and i could use it to replace a fruit or yeah a temple that is or a, right um uh, and that's probably in my best interest Excuse me. So why don't I go ahead and do that? And I want to use the fruit side. Um, and I'll place it here. Right? So now there's two fruits there. Uh, you do not have to do that. And you can place a bonus token on top of a bonus token. Oh, so wow. Okay. If you wanted to put a bonus token where I just put my bonus token to change it to something else, you are allowed to do that. And you can play a bonus token on tiles that you didn't actually place that turn. It can go anywhere. Okay. So the tile that I placed this turn was up at the top with the two building sites. Okay. That's not the tile I placed this turn down at the bottom right. where I placed the bonus token. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, because you want to have an island that has more flowers. So that makes a lot of sense. All right. So I am a straw tile. But you normally now, wouldn't uh, know that. Right. I understand. Um one of these little arch buildings on there, if you said that already and I just didn't hear it, I'm I, sorry. I haven't. So those are actually your clan houses. So those are the ones that you'll have the opportunity to place at the end of the round when we get our, uh, once we've played, one of us has placed a ship and we both score our objectives. Okay. So um, you have four, currently we each have four available to place on this round and four right. more in reserve and okay. then what will happen is at the end of the round we will score or you know we'll have the opportunity to score which means that you can place up to four which means even if there were five islands that met your scoring objective you could only place on four of them because you only have four uh clan houses in your uh in your current and then the like, little current availability but then those will become available like the ones that are in your reserve yeah will uh become available as you uh as we pro progress through the game and i am looking up how many we get at the end of each round there's also these little um pillar looking buildings that are on the map currently the red ones uh color i don't know they, they have four like they, it's like a roof with four pillars and then the floor mm -hmm. what are there I, I see three of them on the map yes currently yes. yeah those are uh i was gonna say churches but they're not churches they're temples temples yes that's the word what are, what, yeah. what does a temple do uh it's it's another one of the objective Oh, okay. I just I didn't see that yep. on any of my. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, like, there are, for example, there's a, there's an, uh, in the rule book, there's an example where there's a scoring objective for uh, having an island that has a temple and two flowers. Okay. And then you would get a point for each temple. 
that is good to know. Uh, okay, so yes, when you at the end of your turn of our round, when we place our clan houses, you then replenish your clan houses from your reserve until you have four in uh, your available clan houses for the next round or until you run out. Okay. So you will never have more than four clan houses in your active player area at one time. Right. One interesting right. thing that can happen in this game is although you are not allowed to place your own clan house color on the same island that you already have a clan house on. So at, after the first round, we'll get to a point potentially where you'll be like, oh man, I really want to put a clan house on that island to score this round, but right. I already have a clan house there. So I, you just can't score that island again. Um, but you can connect islands that already have your clan houses on them. And it's not necessarily beneficial to do so, but it's it it's interesting to uh, and it can also be strategic. You can lock someone out of being able to build on an island by connecting that island to an island that they've already built on. Right. Okay, I think I'm I think I'm understanding. So I am in a weird situation where I have no tiles that I can add to the island that I want to build part of. So I will just do that. Oh, and okay. I am not going to play a bonus token. So when will it prompt you to play one of our houses when we're able to or so what it will do is you so it, what it won't do is prompt you to play a to the to take the land action well it's not that it won't prompt you to it won't uh it will tell you when it becomes an available option we still okay. can't do it because there are still three tiles left in this stack in the middle this is how it keeps the game from going straight to scoring immediately is that you have right. to play until this initial stack of six gets depleted. When will so, it prompt me to place one of my four yellow houses? When we get to the scoring phase, which happens oh. after the after the ship gets placed. I didn't realize you have, oh, you have to place the ships and then put down the houses? So what will happen is once we reach, once we've gotten to the bottom of this stack of that's currently at three, okay. then we will be able to end the round, either of us at any time, by placing a ship. Once the ship is placed, we will do a scoring round. Then we will, that's and that's when we'll place our clan houses. Oh, okay. Then I, we will go <laughs> through the whole objective drawing phase again. Oh, okay. I see. And start I was thinking a whole we put... new round. I was thinking we were putting the the village houses on like while we were placing the tiles down. I didn't realize you'd do that after the ship was placed. Okay. But, that then, okay. but we will go through the whole thing several more times because we're going to do that. Like there will be a ship placed and then we'll do a scoring round. We'll draw new objectives and then we'll do everything that we're doing now again. Because there are still three more ships. Okay. Only whichever one of us placed a ship won't be able to place that ship again. Right. So choose wisely. And I will, uh, when we get to the point where we're allowed to place ships, I can I will pause and, and talk a little bit about how ship scoring works because okay. that is also very important. Neither of those will fit where I need them. I guess that's okay. Do, do, do. So 
So we're coming up on the ship scoring phase. It'll be happening. Well, it will. It is potentially happening as soon. Yeah, as I saw that they became that light. Like now they look yep. like they're clickable. It's okay, and it's because and it's because it's specifically because that that counter went down to zero when your turn ended because we drew gotcha. the last tile from those six. Now these tiles will still be replaced from the stack of 43. There's no difference between the stack of six and the stack of 43. The stack of six is just a counter to tell us when we can start placing. Yeah, that ships. makes sense. Uh, so what that means is that if I wanted to, instead of drawing a tile, instead of drawing one of these island tiles right now, I could pick up a ship tile and land instead and end the round. But I don't have to. I can take an island tile instead and place it and we can continue the round and then you'll have the option to do so on your turn and we can keep placing island tiles for as not necessarily indefinitely. There is a you know, limited stack of island tiles available. Right. Uh, but we but, but for a while before we uh before we place our our ships. Uh, but the one thing I do want to talk a little bit about is the value of placing your ship, not just for ending the round, but for where you might want to place it and why you might want to place it there. So the, we have, we each have our own ship color. And then there are the two gray ships. Uh, gray ships don't score anything at the end of the game. Right. And, and none of the ships score anything when you place them. Or okay. during the game. They only score end game points. Okay. Um, each ship that is of your color, or sorry, not each ship of your color, uh, your colored ship and my colored ship will score for us. Uh, prestige points for each port located on the eight landscape tiles around that oh, ship so okay. it's all of the tiles that surround it including diagonals okay so you will just count up the um the ports on the tiles surrounding it and you get a point for each port okay on the surrounding tiles so you want to place your ship in a place where it's already adjacent to ports when you place it and then you want to start putting ports on the tiles adjacent to it so that you get points for those as well. Uh, and and then the other two, the gray ones, which only exist because we're not in a four-player game, uh, you can also use to strategically end the round early or just to get in someone else's way. Okay. Uh, all are viable and perfectly legitimate options. Gotcha. And as a reminder, yes, I will do that. That's not great. So now you should have the option to place, yes, in addition to what, you know, what your options have been in the past, you should have the only one that should be grayed out now is my colored ship. Is that what you're seeing? Yes. That's exactly what I'm seeing. So if it, does anybody in chat have questions about Small Islands? Has anybody yeah, played Small He's Islands, listening. either on Board Game Arena or in person? Yeah, no, this looks fun. I like this so far. It, I will say here on the on BGA, it's a little hard for me to see some of the symbols on the islands. That's fair. Uh, and I'm trying to like zoom in. When I try to zoom in, it doesn't really make the tiles bigger. It, like makes everything else bigger around it. it can <laughs> and be it's frustrating, like, yeah. But um, but 
like obviously uh when you i think when when you're playing the physical game on the tabletop it's going to be a lot easier to see because you'd be like oh here's this tile <laughs> yep absolutely absolutely that's just sometimes sometimes with digital implementations it's just harder to see the the details of cards and tiles but i like i like what this is doing so far yep this is one of the things that i really love about this game is what i was talking about earlier with the advanced uh the advanced rules where it actually allows you to combine so when we did the draft and we'll and we'll show this again so to chat when uh where i was showing you earlier we drafted these we, we got three choices of uh, mission and reward cards where they're combined into a single card uh and we got to choose one to keep which is this so that this is the one that i chose to keep for this round and then one to reserve which means that this will be combined into the three that i choose from for next round and then one to discard when you play this using the advanced rules these are actually split into separate cards and you do the same thing but you do them separately so you get three mission cards three reward cards and you choose a mission card to play for this round a mission card to reserve for next round and a mission card to discard a reward card to play for this round oh wow a reward okay. card to reserve and a reward card to discard and then you pair your chosen mission card with your chosen reward card and that's how you define what your uh what your goal is for the round and what you re what your reward will be what you score for when you achieve that that mission for the round that is very cool it's the way it, it winds up working is just really really effective does the island have to be complete for it you does to not. score it okay no it does not okay um, so what I would propose is that we play a couple more turns and then end this round, go through scoring and another draft so that you can see kind of how round one yeah. ends and how we move into round two and then switch over to It's a Wonderful World. Absolutely. Unless you unless you have questions that you'd like to continue, like if you if you feel like this is not enough of no, the game think, and you want to keep playing, we can absolutely do that. But I think it's making sense to me. If it's um, if it's not clicking, I'm a hundred percent fine with continuing. Like, like and and you could tell me if I'm doing anything wrong here. But like my goal that I'm currently working towards is I have to have uh, islands that there are at least that are ties between two of the three possible resources. So the okay. two islands that I was working on was the northern island and the eastern island. And on the eastern island right now, it looks, I believe I have ties with fruit and leaves. And I'm, on the northern island, I believe I have a tie with a fruit and leaves. So I think I'm doing the right thing <laughs> um, from what I can tell. So. so the only one I'm not sure about on this eastern island is, oh, actually, I was there was a leaf that I didn't notice. So I see three fruit and three leaves. Yeah. And on the northern island, I see three fruit and three leaves. So yeah, it looks like yep. I, I, at least for that one, I'm understanding. <laughs> yep. And because so, you yeah. are able to place up to four clan houses, you, you can, you are not forced to, by the way, you have the option yeah. not to place, but you, you can choose to place during the scoring phase on each of these islands. And then you'll have, you'll be able to score for them. You, you might sometimes choose not to. If, for example, you think that that island could potentially score you more points in a future round, because okay. remember, when you place a clan house on an island, you will not be able to place another clan house on that island for the rest of the game. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my uh, my ship tile right now, which probably isn't what I would do at this point in the game normally, but uh, yeah, that's a good spot for that. So I have, uh, I'm going to be placing my clan houses now because, and I get to place first because I'm the one who placed the ship tile. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So, and that's another reason to be strategic about choosing when to end well, the round. In, in this scenario, we weren't really working on the same islands either. So oh, absolutely not at all. Mm -hmm. But, but it might have been that 
I felt like you were getting ahead and building a huge island that was going to score you a ton of points. Right. And you could I had already that kind of, and maybe I had already maxed out what I thought I could build. And I was just like, the longer I let this go on, the more you're going to score and I'm not going to be able to catch up. I'm just going to end the round real quick to keep you from getting ahead. Yeah. Uh, so right that now I can score, I will be able to score two different islands, but, but also if had, this is a, a thought that I had and then forgot to go back to, um, uh, if we were competing for two, for clan houses on the same island, let's say we had been competing, for example, for this island in the middle. Okay. That only has one building site on it. Yes. The fact that I get to place first right now is critical because yes. there's only one place to build. So I'm going to place there and I will score five points, but that also blocks you from being able to build on that island. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter because you weren't planning on building on that island. Right. But if we had been competing for that spot, then yeah, that would then the fact that I got to go first matters. So I've placed clan houses everywhere that I can. So I'm ending my reward phase. Now it's your reward phase. Now, when it comes to the island having multiple spaces. Does it matter where your clan it, house is on the island? It doesn't. Okay. Only to the extent that it's on, it's somewhere on that island. As long as it's, yeah, exactly. Once the island is connected, the pieces are connected to each other. It doesn't matter which one you place on. Do note though, that the one on the bottom left there is actually not on. I don't think that's actually part of, the same island it might be i oh, would really it. i don't know huh it, it might be it should be but i don't know what the bga implementation would okay. like how Let's that see. would treat it oh so it, it okay so i i undid what i was doing and i hovered over it it, it mm -hmm. is saying i would get the same amount of points so okay. it, it, it is saying that is uh part of that okay good now so i'm gonna get six points for my east the bottom eastern island and I feel like that's pretty good for my um, goal. The yeah. Northern Island here, I would only get four points from the goal. Um, what is the goal? It is. I mean, what it, is the scoring? Uh, it's four, six, eight, or ten. If the size of the island is three, six, nine, or twelve. So the size of this island is, is one, five, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, but unfortunately, but of course, I'll won't have this goal card next turn right so to me like it's i feel like it still makes sense to score it probably because I, I have i mean it's four points so i'm just gonna go ahead and score it anyway um and and reward phase so now we're being prompted to do the same thing that we did before the game started which right. is choose one objective card uh, to use for the current round and also choose another one to reserve for the next round. And we would be choosing these in the exact same way. I mean, pretty much nothing else has changed from, uh, from what we did at the beginning of the game, except that now we have some car some tiles already laid. We have some clan houses on the board and I have placed my ship tile so there were some things that inform these decisions now. Uh, and these objectives that I have are a little different. Uh, for example, I have an objective that is, you may place a house on an island if there is at least one. Oh, this is actually the one that you just had. That is, there is at least one of the three possible ties between two different resources. Yes, that's the one I had. Yep. Uh, and then it's uh, three, six, nine, or 12 scores, four, six, eight, or 10 points so that's exact, exactly the one that you just had uh, so but here's here's an interesting spot because you have completed this island with a tie between fruits and leaves i have one that has you may place a house on an island if there are strictly more fruits than leaves mm -hmm. um, now that's not necessarily a situation where i'm completely out of luck with that island because of bonus tiles Right, you can so, you can cover up one of my existing things, and 
I mean, right. that doesn't hurt me at this point because no, I already scored because my you can't place on that island. So because right. we're in a two way, because we're in a two player game and you can't place on that island, that's probably what I would want to play here because I yeah. have a bonus tile or bonus token that would let me benefit from that and. So it makes it easy to, for me to score, and I know you're not going to be competing for it. And then I score one point per uh, fruit plus two. Right. And I can add fruits there. So it's basically a guaranteed four, six points for that island, potentially. Uh, and then my third option would be you may place a house on an island if there are at least one temple and two ports. And the reward for that is two uh, prestige points per resource of the most scarce type present on the island, plus two uh, prestige points. So whichever of the uh, any, not just temples or ports, but uh, any of the resources, so flowers, fruits, leaves, or ports right. that are least, uh, that are the, the most scarce on that island uh you get that's two pretty, that's some pretty points. yeah you get two prestige points for each my the all the bonus tiles that i got this time they're all like hey score the islands you just scored already oh no because <laughs> they all like yeah like two of them want temples and the only two islands on here that have temples are the two islands that i scored <laughs> so we're gonna keep uh this but on. you can also you also will i mean you can add stuff to the islands that I've been that I've scored on. You'll oh, be able yeah. to add tiles to those, uh, and you'll be able to use your bonus tokens on those. I just didn't have any. I I I chose something different because I didn't have anything that actually had temples on them, and I didn't see any temples in the current stacks. So that's fair. I only I chose the only one that didn't want me to have to do temples. <laughs> Uh, and yes, to uh, to headbanging maniac, you're seeing my screen right now. Uh, I'm I'm sharing my screen. Woo! So I'll leave this up to you. Do you want to continue playing a little more on this one? Um, you... Let's. Why don't we play through at least the second round here? Sure, absolutely. And and because I, I don't th I don't think it will take as long to no, play the second round. Um, and then we will we can run it over to it's a wonderful world. Absolutely. So for chat, I know that we've been talking openly about what we're uh, what we're keeping and what we're using as our objectives. That's normally these are hidden objectives, and we wouldn't be uh, revealing that information. Uh, but especially for you guys for this round so that you know what we're working on. I'm, uh, I chose a mission that is focused on uh, putting houses on islands where there are more fruits than leaves. And this works particularly well for me this round because this island over here that, uh, yeah. that Rock <laughs> built has the same number of fruits as leaves. And I, although I can't make the island bigger, I can add a bonus token to it that would immediately qualify it for my plant for my objective and he can't build on this island because he's already got a clan house here so i know he can't compete with me for it uh, and then this other one that he built on also has a tie and i can build onto it because it hasn't been completed so Yay, legends work is done that's always good hooray. to hear congrats legends made it through work, another work, day work ends a little later over in hawaii <laughs> yes it does team legends I, I have a feeling that you're just team not rock because <laughs> i feel like whatever team whoever i'm playing with legends it's always whoever i'm playing against <laughs> that's not fair <laughs> yes time to relax and probably go get some yummy food and maybe walk to the board game store <laughs> That seems like a typical day for Legends. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Why can't I put that where I want to? I drew the it's wrong It's 4.55 here. Nice. 
It is 10 o'clock on the East Coast. We need them in paradise. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, right? Legend's known for, for his beach streams. <laughs> Making everybody else jealous. <laughs> what you got for us, Bree? This is the first time you're hearing Blackwingberg's voice. There you go. <laughs> That's true. Nah. We have nah. chatted quite a bit in other people's chat and other people's Twitch chats. And and cool. you'll be at uh, Dice Tower West next week, right, Legends? We'll and if you want to hear Bree's voice again, you can come over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv right. slash Rolling With Rock, at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Saturday. What, three more hours, so 1 p.m. Hawaiian, if that's right. That sounds <laughs> On right. On Saturday, this Saturday, because we're going to be playing small islands and it's a wonderful world like actually not like a teach playthrough an actual playthrough uh over on my channel for tabletop live now that's actually great. kind of how we landed on having this stream tonight yes. which was <laughs> i needed to teach these games to rock so that we would be prepared for the stream on saturday and then <laughs> yesterday or two days ago we were like well why don't we just have then why don't we just stream the teach too <laughs> so here we are exactly and that's great, Legends. I'm looking forward to it. I haven't met just Czar either. Do you get anything at the end of the game for not using the bonus tokens? No. Or is it It's just you, you use them or you lose them? You use them or lose them. Okay. Uh, there are... There, there is a thing called discovery tokens, which I don't think we will encounter on any of the cards that we have access to in this game. Okay. Uh, that do award some prestige points. Um, but otherwise, the only things that you score for are uh, tokens gained during the game, which also come from cards that you that we don't have in this version of the game. Uh Prestige points for the ports on the eight landscape tiles next to your ship. And uh, the points that you've earned. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the uh, the tokens gained during the game are the ones that you gain when you uh, when you place the tile or when you when you score your tiles between uh, between rounds. I'm not thinking of those in terms of tokens because we aren't physically getting tokens, but they are right. they are awarded in tokens. So okay. oh, it doesn't actually show me your score. But the, the points that you scored during uh during scoring phase were awarded in tokens. Like yeah. you got physical tokens and I got physical tokens. We just didn't actually get physical tokens. Gotcha. Um, sure. I think. I want that. <laughs> Sounds good, Legends. I appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous of you all going to Dice Tower West. I I wanted to go, but it just it it didn't work financially, unfortunately. Oh, I get it. It's uh I know it's super far away from you, Bree. Yeah. <laughs> It's honestly, that's really kind of the only reason that I'm going because it's, if I needed to travel to go to it, that it's kind of right on the edge of like my comfort level right now, if that makes sense. And yeah. I have a, like, I have a friend who was thinking about coming, but has to travel from Northern California and decided not to come for the same reason. It's totally just, understand. Like, not comfortable, decided it was too risky. Yeah, I, I definitely wanted to go. It just didn't work out this time. Oh, 
Legend says he will cheer Team Bree here because she is teaching you, but then he will be Team Rock for the game on, sun on Saturday. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> do I want to do that? I don't know. Because there's no really way of... Oh, I hit confirm. Eh, I guess that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> there's no... i got all these ports around here, but there's not really a good way of getting the ship there. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a difficult spot for sure. No, what to do? I don't really need any of those. Yeah, I'm looking forward to. I mean, I was looking forward to this stream, but I'm also looking forward to Saturday because I think that will be yeah a lot of fun too. and absolutely pretty much. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook or if you're watching on YouTube, uh, there is a large board game live streaming community over on Twitch. If you go to www.tabletoplivenetwork.com, uh, you can see all the lists of streamers that are associated with TLN. Uh, it was put together by Mike and Nick Murphy, the brothers Murph and Ruel Gabriola. And they brought in a bunch of wonderful streamers every month at the end of the month. We do a 24-hour marathon of board game streaming on Twitch. Uh, we are going to be doing that this weekend, starting at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. And I believe that is starting. Uh, the pre-show should either be on... Who's the pre-show on? Da -da 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 -da. Um, on Ruel's channel, so Ruel Gabriola. Um, but we'll be starting at noon... That's at 11. We'll be starting at noon with Paula and Matthew on Paula Deming's channel, raiding into uh, Panda Angel, then myself, Ruel's channel, uh, Board Game Blitz, where we'll be playing um, a game show, a mall game show, hosted by your moderator, Chris. Um, our friends, Games That's of Fire. Of oh, I'm so looking forward to that. Um, Games of Fire, Nerds of the West, Dutch Yoda, Duchess, Meeple Conrad, Lose Palooza and Silver Metal Tavern are all going to be streaming as part of Tabletop Live Network. So if you are less familiar with the Twitch side of the board game content creation, I implore you to come over to Twitch, not only for Lucky Duck's channel, please go and follow Lucky Duck Games EN on Twitch, but check out Tabletop Live Network, um, check out my channel, Rolling With Rock, and all of our wonderful streamers, because if you're ever looking... I mean, obviously, if you're on Twitch or I mean, if you're on YouTube, you can find any, you know, recorded content. Uh, but if you're looking for more actual interactions with people like what we're doing right now, live content, pretty much any time of day, you can find board gamers streaming over on Twitch. And uh, you're going to see Lucky Duck doing that more, too. So absolutely, it's definitely something that I implore you to check out the Twitch side of things as well. Uh, recorded content is great, but there's, it doesn't do the same thing as live interacting content and there's definitely more of that on twitch than with facebook or youtube yeah i, so I couldn't agree more i for my own personal viewing i very i really absolutely prefer being able to interact with people while they're yeah. playing games even if it's just random chat and not actually talking to them about what they're doing in the game but just yeah. being able to talk to them while they're playing or or just hear what I, they're thinking and react to it or, or laugh at the funny things that they say it's just the fact that it's interactive makes it just oh yeah much and and we as streamers love that so much more because it's like i know for me personally i started off doing youtube doing recorded content and it is fun to do but live content where somebody could say something in chat like you know panic can come in right now panic games can come in and say hello and we could be like, hi, Panic. Whereas, like, if you're doing recorded content, you don't have that interaction. Yep. You, you are able to interact with people that same way. And so um, Twitch is, obviously, YouTube does, you know, we're, we're live on YouTube right now. We're live on Facebook right now. Um, but generally speaking, from what I've seen in the board game world, you're going to see more live board game content on Twitch than those other two. So if you're not doing so, please come over to Twitch. It's, you know, it's just like any of the other social sites, free to make an account. 
and we can recommend a lots of great uh board game streamers to watch any time of day so sorry sorry to kind of like beat the drum oh, on there but please don't that's be where, and, and honestly that's the the twitch board game community like the viewers are a second to none like everybody over there are top notch everybody is understanding everybody is welcoming you, you there is not like you don't have issues on twitch when it comes to the board game community there's bots, there's outside things, there's other silly stuff that happens now and then. But the community itself, the people who are watching, are top notch. So and I appreciate that. All right. Oh, this is an interesting tile. I've never seen a tile like that before. Oh yeah. This like three-sided land like tile. Sure. Yep. That one's how do you even use that? Gotta find just the right spot for it. Or place it somewhere wide open doesn't i kind of want to take it just to yeah. have it <laughs> well, because you are able to rotate a tile when you place it right so if you can find a place where it fits now that might make it difficult to surround later but it fits there now right like it's it only has to match on one side now if that makes sense yeah no for sure it's very interesting I'm place it down here because this looks fun. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Legends is asking if uh, you, Brie, have played Vikings Gone Wild. You know what's funny is that I haven't, and I do actually have it here uh, because when I started my job with Lucky Duck, they shipped me a huge pile of games, <laughs> uh, which uh, maybe while you're when you're working on a turn in uh, in its a wonderful world, I'll pull up a, a my picture of the uh, the games that they sent me when I when I first started. Awesome. Uh, but I have not had a chance to play it. It was our it was uh, Lucky Duck one of Lucky Duck Games' very first titles. I don't know what I want. Maybe this. I'll be honest, none of these tiles are really great for me <laughs> in that like, I haven't drawn a single tile that I could play at the top on the top oh, no. island. Like none of literally no tiles that have been possible to play on the top island. Oh, no. Uh, maybe that's not true. I actually probably could have played the, the one, this a diagonal shape that could have gone up there. I probably should have. Too late now. Or not that they're not possible, but that that wasn't possible without closing the island off, which is not right. what I wanted to do. That makes a lot of sense. Legend says he really likes Vikings Gone Wild with the expansion that makes it a co-op. That's awesome. Yeah, I have heard terrific things about it, and I mean, obviously... It's right in my wheelhouse and it's in my uh second. finally completed that little island oh there. you sure <laughs> did and you gave yourself a building site i did critical <laughs> critical building site teriyaki cheeseburger that sounds very interesting oh yes it sure legends does. always comes up with some cool things to eat mm-hmm
Yeah, doesn't it hit me, Minnick? Sounds sounds awesome to me. All right. So at the, once we decide to end this round, friends, uh, that'll be the end of like the teach for small islands. We'll be playing this game in full on my stream, and obviously we'll be going a little bit faster because uh, we're going to try to get both small islands and it's a wonderful world taught or uh, played in two hours for TON. Yep. So that's the plan. Hi, Jedi. Nice to see you. Hi, Jedi. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That might just start something new over here. Oh, there is that. Which one did I pick? All right. Oh, there's another one of those three-sided tiles. Oh, that is an unfortunate spot that I was not expecting. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Jedi, are you are you also going to Dice Tower West? I will be there as well. Oh, I don't know what to do. I was trying to get to the point where I could potentially place my ship. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see many good places to put my ship anymore because I had a plan where I was going to put my ship and now that <laughs> Not possible. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine I mean, that's where I'm talking about. <laughs> that might have been a little on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you. So uh, for chat, the, the benefit of placing your ship will be to score end game points by having it next to ports. Ports are the little anchor symbols point post uh, printed on the tiles. Uh, but the one difficult thing about placing your ship is that it uh, all of the ship tiles only have water on them they have no land so they can only be placed in locations where all of the surrounding tiles have only water on them and the spot that uh that rock was looking at is the spot right next to where he had just placed this tile that has two ports yes which <laughs> would have been <laughs> Which would have been a great place to put his ship, but I foiled his plan by placing this tile on my last turn, which put some land next to that spot and made it so that he couldn't place a port there. That 100% was the case. <laughs> uh, yes, there are going to be people from Lucky Duck, or there there will actually be a Lucky Duck employee at SaltCon also. Uh, we have a very small number of Lucky Duck employees in the US and <laughs> we have one going to SaltCon, one going to Dice Tower West. Oh, that's cool. There will be an escape room at SaltCon this year. That sounds fun. I like this. I like I like I, I like games like this. There's a, um, I don't know what this game, how how old is Small Islands? Uh, it was just released last year. Okay. So yeah, I don't know if this, uh, there's an older game. I don't know if you know of it or not. Uh, called Gold Ahoy. That was in the US. It was released by Mayfair Games. Um, who obviously aren't even around anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's a little two player game. And okay. all you do is all the tiles are either land tile, like they have land and sea on them, just like these tiles do. And you're just trying to match up the land and the sea and like make like channels of either water or land. Okay. But it reminds me a lot of, it's like if you took that game and then added like three more complexity levels onto it. And I, I like it a lot. It is, it is definitely uh, a fun tiling game that I enjoy. So. Yeah, I, I really enjoy this. And I think one of the things that I like the most about this is 
that it takes some of the things that I like about Carcassonne with the tile laying and the decision making, but it adds uh, the the advanced mode where you're trying to uh, you're trying to compete for goals that are a different from everyone else's and b uh, <laughs> uh, and b hidden from everyone else so that you're not necessarily aware of what you're competing for uh, but also that they change every round and the idea that especially when you're in the advanced mode that you can mix and match your objectives so that you can plan out your own goals and say this is what I want to work towards right where in this version if we were just kind of handed okay you're gonna go for fruits I'm gonna go for fruits you know islands with fruits more fruits than leaves and when I do that I'm gonna get points for fruits on that island so I will and, have and that's know. it like <laughs> that's what you I get you try to block me from placing my ship against ports but what you've done is allow me to complete another island with an objective <laughs> well done <laughs> And and it's not necessarily entirely. I mean, it's not like a mutually exclusive not, point, but right. I mean, you you can always place not always place your ship. You can place your ship, but it would have prevented you from yeah. You would have scored fewer points by right. placing it when you did, or when I'm trying to find at least two points for my ship. Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> I mean, I'm only getting one from mine, and I, I haven't really had many opportunities to fix that either. So, Well, isn't there two ports around that ship? On my ship? Oh, there are two. I forgot that. I, You know, I even said that you get diagonals and then <laughs> forgot. Is Pocket Detective a micro game? Uh, it Define is... Fine micro. It is a deck of cards. And I'm assuming you're... I haven't actually done a, a scenario yet. I was going to do one actually really soon before my uh, my capture card died. And so then I'm not able to do uh, tabletop content at the moment. But it's a deck of cards and there's no rule sheet. There's no rule sheet at all. I, I opened it up on stream and there's no rule sheet. It's just three decks of cards, three different scenarios. And the deck of cards will instruct you what to do as you play the game. So I'm assuming you're going to have to fl uh, put out cards and have some space on the table. But generally speaking, uh, you know, from what I can tell, it's just it's cards and you're going to have to read cards. Yeah, the rules are actually printed on the cards. That's why there's no rule book. Uh, and, and the original printing, because we we brought it over from this is a, a one of the localized games that we where right. we brought it over from another language. And, and Lucky Duck is the English publisher for for uh, for this game and the uh in the original printing it was three separate games or three separate decks that were that were sold separately so they were packaged differently from the current uh the current packaging we've combined them into a single box uh but when you say pocket and name alone that's that's in the sense that this box won't fit in your pocket i mean you depends i guess on how big your pockets are but you could potentially fit one of the three decks in your pocket yes uh they are playable as like each deck is a, is is a game in and of itself uh but it's definitely not a board game there is no board there are no components other than cards uh okay so rock has ended the round I have. And you've already placed your scoring. I did. Everywhere. <laughs> uh, so I am placing here for six, here for seven. I think that is all I can score. And then if we were going we to would... continue, right. that would uh, we would go through and repeat the same process two more times. So, yeah. So that 
I mean, that works. I understand that. Um, I think that's good for the teach. Uh, if you would like to see a full play, probably a little bit quicker too. Um, obviously, because we want to be going through the teach mode of this. Yep. Uh, we will be playing the full game on my stream, twitch.tv slash rolling with rock on Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific as part of the Tabletop Live Network's 24-hour marathon for February. That's right. And Legends just for you, that's at 1 p.m. Hawaiian time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so with that... We got, hey, we own, we own the Hawaiian demographic. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaiian board gamers. The Hawaiian board game demographic. <laughs> so I'll switch back to this and... Uh, that's cool. I like that a lot. Oh, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I ended up through two rounds with 34 points. No, uh, 36 points. Uh, you were definitely ahead of me. I'm at 23. Okay. Yeah, I every island that is created, I have a house on. Great. But well then done. again, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. We had two more rounds to play. Yep. I only had two more houses. Yep. So you had four still. So even though, you know, obviously at that moment, I'm in the lead, you have more scoring opportunities through the rest of the game uh, that could easily end up winning. You could is oh. end up winning that way. Um, so that's fun. I like, I like how there's kind of a give and take on when do you put your, your houses down? Uh, it's not 4 p.m. Eastern. It's, 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 sorry. Uh, Seven, seven it's Eastern, four Pacific, four Pacific, one Hawaiian, one, East, one Hawaiian. Yes. Oh, it's oh, two, hours, is two hours, two hours behind. behind. I okay. thought it was three hours behind. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I did two. <laughs> so seven Eastern, four Pacific, whatever that is for Hawaii. Two, two Hawaiian <laughs> then? Two o'clock Hawaiian if it's four o'clock here? Four o'clock Pacific? PM. Okay. So I have pulled up Game Park and I'm looking for looking through the so I'm gonna switch this off of random and just set it to side A because okay. this is your first time playing and we're gonna we're gonna do this as a teach. And I would also like to say thank you to the five new followers over on twitch.tv slash lucky duck games en thank you uh, you guys have already got five new followers that's over the fantastic course of the stream. uh so please if you're watching over on twitch right now i see 13 people live on twitch or if you're even watching on some of the other platforms and you have a twitch account do lucky duck games a favor do Bri a favor go over to the twitch account as well follow them there thank you so that we can grow them uh they you have to get to at least 50 followers to become an affiliate on twitch so make this help get lucky duck games to 50 followers thank you i appreciate that and that is something that i'm working on is uh is trying to grow the twitch channel and that's uh something that i will be plan i'm planning on doing more of in the future is is streaming directly to twitch so that i'll be able to uh to get more focus on growing that audience and and building our uh Building our relationships there. Yeah. And Game Jedi, I absolutely agree. This is one of my very favorites, and I'm really excited to teach this. I love small islands. Uh, and I actually particularly enjoy playing small islands in person, although I do really feel like this is the VGA implementation is quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will say it did work well. And it, yeah, it does work really effectively, but it's there's something very tactile for me about tile laying games. So it's like, it's a good experience, but I definitely urge you to try it, the physical version of it. Oh, um, I mean, it's a, it's we, a wonderful we'll be playing world. It on stream at some point. I'm sure I can get Mrs. Oh, Rock to play it for me with a, on a Mrs. Rock night once we get awesome. the, the that would cam be work terrific. Again. And you do, well, that, and that, you do so, have a physical copy. So. Yes. And, well, the, the, the funny thing is too, when, when I first started talking with Bree, we were talking mostly about solo games or games that I could play as like two players. And then between that time and now, uh, my wife has shown interest in playing games with me on stream, just her herself being off camera. And so that's actually been really nice because now I can play multiplayer games without having to do like two hands myself. 
which is really cool. Oh, that makes me so happy. Uh, and this one, I don't know what kind of games she particularly enjoys, uh, but this one, I'm I especially love. It's it's kind of I'm just like really. I've been it scratches all the itches for me, while. and I have not played this implementation of it, but I'm really excited to because I feel like the uh, the mechanics of It's a Wonderful World are are almost perfectly designed for a digital implementation. So this is a card drafting resource management game. Uh, so there's cards and there's cubes and it's it's just like the perfect perfect combination of of cards and cubes and art for a digital implementation. So I'm excited. We are to playing share it with on you. a website called Game Park. Um, it is game park.com. Neither of us have actually used this uh, browser-based um, digital implementation That's before. true. This is a first for uh, both of us. It To create games with it, um, with friends, you do need a subscription to the website. I don't, yes. we don't, we don't know if you can play games like random without a subscription or not. So feel free to look into that on your own time. Uh, but just know we are using a service that is a paid service to play on uh, with each other for this implementation. Yeah, it it did seem like you could choose a like you could choose a like you could play against random opponents without a paid subscription, but that you did need a paid subscription in order to play against us. A, a, only one person need like I I set up a paid subscription and then I was able to to select a friend from a friends list and invite them to play. Right. in a game and no one else on my in the in the invitation list needed to have a uh, a paid account uh legend says when he met daryl andrews designer of sagrada in hawaii he got him a discount with his points to buy his copy of it's a wonderful world that's awesome legends because i know cool. how much he loves this game <laughs> and we don't sell it in canada uh, oh, no. we actually only have we, we were only able to sell it's a wonderful world in the U.S., so it's it's actually localization hard for is so weird. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I, like it really to, is. I I will. It's funny because like from a content creator side, we are we have the the not so great habit of saying the game and the publisher, and not necessarily the designers all the time. But the problem with that is, especially with localized games, is the publishers aren't even always the same. Mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen games where you know depending on the area they're published by five different publishing companies. Now yep. you're you're saying it from where you are, but you know sort of like in my case I'd be saying it's a wonderful world published by Lucky Duck Games. But sure, but if we somebody actually, from yeah somebody we localized both of these titles. You know, Australia is watching. I don't know if they if it's in Australia or not, but I'm just throwing out a country. It may not be published by you guys down there. <laughs> that might feel for it's a wonderful funny thing. world. We only publish this in the U.S. In the U.S. and it's the, and it's the same for it's a wonderful kingdom, which we will be uh, publishing in Q, late Q two, early Q three. So that was just uh, delivered the Kickstarter backers, and we will be uh, publishing it in retail later this year. Uh, that's so that's the two two player version and solo version uh, that brings the same kind of mechanics from It's a Wonderful World into a game with, a, instead of the regular drafting mechanics, it actually uses an I cut, you choose oh, mechanic. Okay. So it's it's actually a, a really interesting implementation of this game that's specifically designed for two players or a, a fairly intense solo mode uh, where you're playing against Nautima. I can't wait Nautima. to try it. Yeah, it's, I, it's I terrific. I cannot wait to try it because I... I obviously enjoy playing solo games on stream. We do that a lot, but yeah, I, I'm really, really looking forward to trying both modes awesome. with, you know, when we can do that sometime down the road, but yeah, why don't we, uh, and, and Steph said now. that game park has that this implementation that. is great. great. So that I'm is really great happy to hear to that. Hear. Um, Very we're happy about to, to find that. out. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, so like you were saying, so both it's a wonderful world and small islands are localizations. So, it's a Wonderful World uh, was originally published in French by La Boite de Joux, and they actually ran Kickstarters for this game and for It's a Wonderful Kingdom. And 
it, they, I mean, then they did publish it in English and, and several other languages in addition to French, but we are their retail partner right. for publishing this game in English in the U S uh, we, and for small islands, it was originally published in French by mushroom games and, yeah. uh, and we localized it in English. So it was not published in English previously. And then okay. we are their English language partner. And okay. for that game, really, the only thing that's language dependent is the rule book because yep. the game itself and all the cards are just icons, which is really nice. Yep. So, so if you could read the rule, like if you had a rule book where you could print off an English rule book, you could even own a different language copy of the game and still be able to play it if you could, you know, read rules in a different language, which is really awesome. It's funny. I have, I don't think you could, can you see it actually right up here? Where is it? Yeah. Right up here on my screen, there was a box. It's a big box of Queen Games Fresco. Okay. <laughs> um, it is a German edition of the box because I was at Gen Con one year and they didn't have the English boxes. They only had the German <laughs> ones and they were selling them at a severe discount for that reason. Because um, sure. they went, oh no, we have the wrong thing. <laughs> Uh, so they were like, all you have to do is go on the BGA and print out the rules for it uh, yeah. in English, and you can uh, BG, I mean not BGA, BGG, and print out the rules, and you can play the game. I've owned that game for three or four years, and I have yet to actually go and print the rules. To <laughs> <laughs> so it's just funny, but yeah. you can't. There, I mean, sometimes that happens. So I have a, I have a German edition of a board game in my house. <laughs> the very first play I ever had of the crew was like that where but my friend who had it had it in german and had a printed out copy of the rules translation but we only really needed it for the missions yeah so we would like start a new mission and instead of looking at the mission in the rule book we would look at the mission on the printout find out what we were doing for that round and then start playing once we were playing we really didn't need anything because the Cards are just numbers and colors, and we were good to go. Uh, all right, so uh, you can, uh, Rock, you can see my screen on, this, on the stream, yes. right? Yes, so this is showing me my, uh, the, the nation that I'm yes. playing, and you will also have a nation that will be different I from do. mine. Uh, and I'm gonna very quickly walk you through this card Okay. Uh, so the way that mine works is as the Pan-African Union. Uh, so on the upper left, it's showing that I will earn two victory points for each of these uh, the green symbols that I have built. And let me make sure that I give you the. Uh, this is one of those things where it's like I don't I don't know the names of these things right. off the top of my head, but I really should. Uh, right. Green is science. Okay. So, um, yeah. So the uh, the science production symbol. These will appear on the cards, and again, this is one of these things where this is not the order that I would walk you through this if I was showing yeah. you the physical it's game. Just... But this is. But I will. I will tell you this quickly, and then this will make more sense when I when I show it to you in the game. Uh, so at the end of the game. You'll get, I will get two points for each building I've completed of this symbol. Uh, and so this is end game scoring. This is just okay. helping, helping me to define my, my goals from the start. And you will have something similar to that, but it will not be the same as right. mine. Uh, okay. So then to the right of that, we have some production. So these okay. are on mine. I earn two materials, which are the gray symbols, and two science, which are the green okay. symbols. Uh, the other ones, the black are energy, the yellow is gold, and the blue is exploration. Okay. Uh, and then in the setter, this will be the same on both of ours. It will show five transparent cubes. That means those, those are essentially wild. That refers to any cube that is on this card. Okay. Any combination of five cubes can be converted into a crystallium, which is a red cube. Ooh. The red cubes are wild. 
they can be used as any other cube. Okay, so five uh, to one can be... It's five in... to one. And okay. and there are some cards that require Crystallium as their okay. currency. Cool. So we'll come back to this because there are some other rules around the, car, the, the placing, like once something's placed on this card, but it will make more sense once we've talked about how you acquire uh, materials. and Okay. So we'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, so it says, it's telling me to choose a card and place it in my draft area. So I have a hand of cards here. And in a two-player game, I have a hand of 10 cards. In a, hand, in, a, in a game with any other number of players, aside from solo. And this game, by the way, not only can be played solo, but is very popular in the solo community. It has a terrific nice. solo mode. And with with one of the expansions, in fact, has a uh, a soloable, although it's not a re not a requirement to solo it, uh, has a uh, campaign mode. Yes, I'm excited to try that. <laughs> uh, with with unlockables and and like little. I love campaign and, games. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do too. I I am really excited. I haven't played it myself. Um, okay, so in the, in the two player variant. We're drafting from a hand of 10 cards. We will only okay. be drafting seven of them total each. Uh, but we will be passing these hands back and forth. So you'll have okay. 10 cards. I will have 10 cards. I will pick one and pass you this hand. You'll pick one and pass me your current hand. And we'll go back and forth until we've each taken seven. And the other three will be discarded. Awesome. Each of these cards has, like I'm mousing over one of them right now on my screen. Yep. In the upper left, it has the cost to build it. So this one, the espionage, espionage Agency, costs two energy and two gold. Oops. Okay. See that? Two energy and two yep. gold. Uh, when I, once I've built it, it will earn me two exploration during, okay, so the, during the resource production phase. Okay. So this gets added to I'm going to I'm going to move my mouse now back over here to the uh to the card. This is the Pan African Nation Pan African Union card that I showed you at the beginning. Good night, Panic. Once Good night, Panic. Uh so once you construct a card, that is once you've completely paid all of the uh the resources that are needed yes to build it, it gets added above here and becomes part of the resources that you earn during the production phase. Okay. So right now I'm only earning these four resources during production, which are the two materials and two science. Right. Once I've built this card, I will also earn these two exploration in addition to the, the four that I'm already earning. Does that make sense? Yes. So if I were to choose to build this, it would be, if I were to choose to draft this, rather, it would go into my draft area. We would go through the whole draft. Right. Then we go through a production phase where we'll start getting the cubes that are going to come from here. And we can use those to build the cards that we've drafted. Okay. You don't have to build them all at once. The ones that you haven't completed at the end of the round will stay in front of you. And then we'll go through another draft phase. However, there's one other thing that's very important to know, which is that down here in the bottom right corner, and I can't point to it with my mouse because yeah. as soon as I mouse over to it, it moves to the other card. Yep. Um, down here in the bottom right, you see there's another little uh, exploration symbol. Do you see that one in the circle? Yes. That's the amount, uh, the, the, recycling bonus that you get if you choose instead when so this says you would draft this card just like normal but instead of building it during the build phase instead of choosing to construct this card you discard it and you get that cube immediately okay so if you needed a blue yeah, to yeah, build yeah, yeah. some other building you could discard this card during the build phase to get that blue that that exploration cube right away 
I was so, going to say, there had to be something like that because I was mm -hmm. looking at my entire hand and I'm like, I can't yep. build anything. That's, and <laughs> so you're, so what you're looking for right now is to draft seven cards that will let you as a combination of yeah. the cubes that you're going to get from your initial production and the recycling bonuses that you can get from discarding them to build something and start potentially building something else that will combine into something that will help you towards uh, building more things later. So my, uh, my starting bonus here, right, is two points per science at the end of the game. So I'm looking for cards that have that science symbol in the bottom right corner, like right. this one. And I don't necessarily have to do that now, but I just want to bear in mind that if I build this card, it's worth two points, two more points to me than right. it might, than it, that it would be, for example, to you. Correct. Um, so two other important things to know. One is this symbol in the middle here. This is a bonus that you get as soon as you build this card. So no matter what is what's pictured here, so in this case, it's this uh, this blue symbol, and then in this case, it's a red symbol with a face on it. Okay, yep. Um, and again, I don't know what these are called. I should, but I don't. Uh, these are generals, and these are financiers. Okay. Financiers. Uh, but then there's also, like on this one, you get a crystallium when you build it. The red wild. Uh, so these, you get this as soon as you construct it. It's a one-time bonus. And okay. they can be used for different things. So in the case of Crystallium, it just goes on here and you can use it at any time. And it might be for something like this that requires Crystallium. This red space can only yes. be completed with a Crystallium. Or you can use Crystallium as wild to fill literally any space on one of your uh, on one of your cards okay the financiers and the generals are special uh tokens these are actually round cardboard tokens that are yeah i remember punching used, this out exactly they're used for uh, a variety of different things they are actually sometimes part of the uh, the build requirements for cards. It's less common. I don't see it on any of these cards. Uh, but they are also scoring on a lot of cards. So, for example, this aquaculture card that I'm uh, that I'm showing right now yeah. scores one point per oh, interesting. Uh, financier. Okay. And they're also automatically worth one point each at the end of the game. So even if you didn't have this, these would be this would be worth a point. But with this okay this is worth two points. And then if you also had this, it would be worth three points. And each one of them would be worth three points from right. that point on for you. So those are the kinds of things that you might be looking to combo. I like that. I like that. One last thing, very important, and maybe my favorite part of this game. When we go, so we're going to draft... And then once we've completed the draft, we'll choose which cards we're going to recycle and which cards we're going to keep for the um, for the build phase. Right. And then we're going to go through the uh, the production phase. And in the production phase, we are actually going to produce each of these resources from left to right. So first we will produce materials and I will make two, I make two materials. And if I happen to have completed something, which is unlikely, but if like I had a recycling bonus, for example, that gave me what I needed to build something, I might okay. get something else, but I probably haven't. But let's say hypothetically that I had chosen this wind turrets card as part of my draft. And actually I, I'm going to go ahead and do that because that just makes things easier here, except that I can't mouse over it now. Oh, there we go, okay. So wind turbines, excuse me. So I'm drafting this wind turbines card. 
if I have played this card during the planning phase into my build area, and now during the production phase, when I get, uh oh, oh, I chose because, one too. Yeah, no, we're fine. We're fine. You just drafted your card and it swapped our hands. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, no, no, you're fine. I just, I'm not familiar with the interface. So I saw something moving and I was, <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. Uh, so during the production phase, I will create, I will produce two materials and that's what I need to build the wind turbines. Right. So I will produce those two and, and complete the wind turbines and put the card on here at the top of my Pan-African Union. And that means that when we go then to the energy production phase, which is immediately after materials, I will get an energy, even though when we started the production phase, I didn't have any energy in my production zone. Right. Because by the time we get to there, I will have one. I see. Okay. Because I will have completed this during the materials production phase. Gotcha. And and you actually do produce for it if you have built it earlier in the production okay. phase. As okay. long as it's done by the time we get, so we go, and we always do these in this order from left to right. So we'll always go materials, oh, very energy, science, gold, exploration. So okay. if when you're planning what you're going to build for the turn, you want to Tiffy. remember that these are going. <laughs> Hi we there. just got raided by Difu. Awesome. Hi, Difu. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome Raiders. Hi guys, welcome. I'll take a minute to uh, to say a quick hello. Thank you for grading us. Hi, Defoob. Hi, Dr. Sign. Hi, Sierra. Hi, Twin Flower. It's so nice to see you. Thank you for rating. Yes. What were you guys playing tonight? You, you are, are experiencing, experiencing a raid. <laughs> we sure are. That's awesome, Sierra. Hello, nice to see you, Sierra, Fred. Uh, we are terrific. playing what we just learned how to play small islands from lucky duck uh now we're i'm learning how to play it's a wonderful world from lucky duck uh if you're not doing so already you're coming over here on twitch please uh consider giving lucky duck games a uh, follow here on twitch so we can get them to 50 followers uh you guys just rated with 31 followers if you wow, all go you. ahead and follow lucky duck right now we'll get lucky duck over the 50 follower mark and they can apply for affiliate status once they reach the uh, required number amazing. of streams so let's please do me a favor, do Bree a favor, do Lucky Duck a favor by going ahead and clicking that follow button. Uh, it doesn't, you know, cost you anything. Doesn't expect you to do anything else. But if you follow them, they can try to get towards affiliate status here on Twitch, uh, which is super important for a multitude of reasons. And then, if you are interested in seeing more gameplay, uh, not only tonight but uh, in the future of both Small Islands and It's a Wonderful World. On Saturday at 7 p.m., 4 p.m., uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, Bree is going to be joining me over at twitch.tv slash Roller with Rock. We're going to be playing both games as part of the Tabletop Live Network event for February. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And that's kind of how we wound up uh, having this stream yes. sort of impromptu tonight, uh, which was we had planned that we were going to be doing the stream on Saturday, and we were talking about how I needed to take rock through the teaches for both of these especially because for the game that i'm teaching right now neither of us have actually played this game park implementation of the game before so although i have played quite a bit of it's a wonderful world in person i've never played it on game park uh, and rock has never played it at all no. so i'm just taking him through the teach right now and we, we were talking about it a couple of days ago and was like well we may as well stream the teach uh, on my channel and then We'll, uh, we'll be playing both of these on uh, Board Game uh, Small Islands on Board Game Arena, and then It's a Wonderful World on Game Park on Saturday. Yes, yes. Over it should on, be a over whole on lot of channel. fun. Uh, Tabletop Live Network is going to have another 24-hour marathon this weekend, and uh, I, we're both very happy to be a part of that. I'm super and excited. I'm very, very much looking forward to doing full playthroughs of both these games because especially um, It's a Wonderful World has been a game that I have been wanting to play for a very long time. It just The opportunity just didn't arise. Uh, we will be playing physical versions of both of these games on my channel in the near future. 
Uh, but this was a great way to have Bree on, you know, on my channel on Saturday to come on Bree's channel here on Lucky Ducks channel tonight and learn both games and get to play both games. So awesome. Thank you. Hi, Color Fly Girl. This is, yeah, this is, I, I love both of these games and they're so different too. I, Small Islands is a tile placement game with some really interesting decision making where you're, you're actually changing, you have secret objectives and you're changing your objectives every round. And you actually have uh, you have the opportunity to make uh, the the rounds different lengths depending on whether you feel like you want the, the round to last longer, and you have the you know you have the you know more chances to score if you keep placing tiles, or yeah, you want to end fun. the round really early because you feel like you've scored as much as you can and you want to get the round over before your opponent scores more points. It's uh, it's fascinating. Uh, I had, Sierra, I, you I think you it. know of you from work? I I recognize that that's Polish, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't speak Polish. Uh, but if you are, uh, I'm pretty sure, Sierra, that you have said that you're going to Dice Tower West, and I will definitely be there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to learn some. So if you speak Polish and you can teach me some Polish, that would be awesome. <laughs> uh because i i am i am one of a very very small number of non-polish employees and lucky duck uh yes i remember uh and yes lucky duck is based in poland and most of our employees are polish uh we have uh how do you say lucky duck in polish do you know? I don't. Oh, no, you don't. I thought maybe you were. I was trying to put you on the spot. No, you're quite all right. You're quite all right. <laughs> I thought maybe uh, I thought maybe they would tell you or they you, would say, do you we, would, you when would they think. talk about the company in Poland, do they say Lucky Duck or do they, they say do. it in? They, oh, they everybody say speaks Duck? English. Okay. Okay. Everybody okay. speaks English. <laughs> it's, in, it's really incredible. To be honest, I've been utterly impressed by the how well everybody I've met speaks English. And they're just and they're like they people apologize for their English. And I'm like, I, I can't say even a couple of words in yeah. Polish. So no. like you, the fact that your English is so incredible is like, that's the crazy we thing. We shouldn't about, even be talking about this. It's amazing. Most yes, places so, around the world, uh, they know two or three languages, you know, yeah. and us Americans were like, what more than English? <laughs> what, what, what's yeah. going on here? Uh, so yes, Lucky Duck is is headquartered in Poland. We have offices in both Krakow and Warsaw. Uh, we have maybe we have fewer than half a dozen employees in uh, France and one in the UK, and then three in the US. And that's it. Other than that, uh, all of our uh, remaining forty five or so employees are in. Uh, uh, we have a, to a total of about forty five employees, of which the rest are in Poland. So that's, uh, yes, that's why I need, to, I really do need to learn some Polish. Uh, but I do know I speak, I used to speak Spanish better than I do now. Uh, and we actually do have quite a few French speakers either. I mean, we have people in France and we also have some people in Poland from France, including our CEO. So there's, there's quite a bit of French also. Uh, within uh, within Lucky Duck. And so I've picked up and also practiced some French over the over the last couple of years. There's just a lot. There's a lot of practice. There's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of language that uh, that I need to, that I need to learn and practice. Uh, so yes, Sierra, we uh, we should we should learn and practice together. Mm. And I will be at, I will be at Dice Tower West. I'll also be at Gamma Expo if you're going to be there in a few weeks. So, uh, yeah, we should definitely chat. All right. In the meantime, should we get back to this teach? Yes. I have already picked up my next card. Honestly, Great. I'm sure I'm going to have questions as we go, yep. but as of we've, right now, I'm pretty much, understanding we've pretty, we've pretty much covered the main things that we need to at this point. Yeah. So the, um, you've got, you've got the, we, we're going to pick cards. We're going to build them. You're going to go through the uh, we're going to either build or recycle them. We're going to go through the production phase and then we're going to go through another draft and we're going to do it again. Uh, we're going to do that a total of four times. Okay. If we were playing with more than two people, the direction that we would pass the cards in would swap 
each round. Yeah. And that's, okay. you can actually see this little turn marker yes. right here to the left of this. It's, this shows that this round we'd be, we would be passing clockwise and then it would flip over and show next round that it would be passing counterclockwise. Obviously that doesn't matter in a two player game. Okay. Uh, okay. So I am looking at, uh, so for chat, for those of you who joined us uh, after we, literally just at the moment that we finished the teach, <laughs> uh, the, the main thing that I'm looking at here, so I'm I'm looking at now a hand of nine cards, of which I will be choosing one to draft and then passing the rest over to Rock. Uh, we're going to be drafting a total of seven of these uh, each, and then the other three will be discarded. And then I've, uh, among the ones that I've chosen, I will be selecting some of them to build and some of them to recycle. And the recycle bonus will be this little icon in the bottom right corner. So I can discard the card to get that bonus immediately, or I can keep the card and build it for the cost in the upper left corner to then add it to my, uh, my kingdom, I suppose, my, uh, my wonderful, my wonderful world, uh, which will let me then get income from it for the rest of the game. And... And my options here are not great, but that has some potential. Oh, that's cool too. So if you at the top right there, if you mm -hmm. clicked on on my name, it'll mm -hmm. show you the cards that I have picked so far. Oh well, yeah, that actually that does kind of make sense because it is open information. It would be open information if we were drafting in person, yeah. Because these cards would be face up in front of it's, us. It's just nice because you could actually like check and see like, oh, okay, this round they're go, you know, they're doing these things. So it's actually yep. that's, that's a nice little touch of that. Yeah, very I can much see, so. I can already see why Steph was saying this is a good implementation of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely see that. That makes sense. I will do that. So our plan here tonight is to uh, just teach to the to the point where uh, Rock feels comfortable, so that we can play this game on his stream on Saturday, just like yes. we did with Small Islands. Uh, but then on Saturday, we're planning on, <laughs> on doing, a, a, Excuse me. if if we can, timing-wise, uh, we're planning on doing a playthrough of both Small Islands and It's a Wonderful Kingdom in two hours. So maybe a, uh, a, we'll uh, speed a, time, sure. a time trial. <laughs> yeah, we'll be speed running for sure, yeah. but that, we'll, we'll make it work. We'll make it yep. work. Uh, and, and we could also potentially do them in the other order if you have a preference up to you i don't know yet i i will have to see i will like yeah i i think i think we'll definitely be able to play both um because i i think i already have a pretty good concept of both games mm -hmm. obviously when we're not trying to do teaching um things will go a lot faster absolutely and, and generally speaking when you're playing games um at lower player counts online, you can go pretty fast. Yep. So the other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is if you get income that you can't use, that you don't have a building spot to place it on, yes, it will go on to your uh, to your player card. Okay. Once it's there, the only thing you can use it for is to convert it to crystallium. Oh, okay. So you have to plan carefully because once it's there, you can't bring it back yeah. to use it for anything else. I'll probably mess it up severely, but that's okay. <laughs> that's one of those things where if you mess it up once, you never do it again <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, I demoed this game for the first time at PAX U. Um uh, must have been in 2019, like a few months before the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. And I had never played it before. Like I learned the game like half an hour before Pax U started and then demoed it at the show. And that was the same for me. Like I, I made that mistake once in my first game. And then I was like, okay, never doing that again. Right. right? Um.
it's funny too because when you learn it in that environment you're never playing like i've since then mostly played this game at much lower player counts but in that particular case i played or or effectively gm'd games where i wasn't playing uh that were all five players oh, <laughs> you know, wow. four players or five players this game does play five um uh, which i like i've almost never gotten a chance to play with that many at once since then And it's certainly a very different game. Yeah. I, so remember I that when we get down to three cards left, we will be discarding them. Yes. So, Anne, we didn't actually finish the game of Small Islands. We decided to switch gears and go straight into the teach of It's a Wonderful World. Yeah, tonight, uh, tonight's games are get the hang of both games, uh, not necessarily complete both games, so that we can explain both games on stream to you all on Saturday and play through both games then. So after we've made this selection, we'll be going into our planning phase, which is where we're gonna choose which of the cards we've drafted that we want to keep for building and which ones we want to recycle. So at this point, you want to try to remember <laughs> which plans, which which cards you planned to build. Oh gosh. Uh, and you can, once you've, plant like if you place a card in your build area it does allow you to change your mind and recycle it so it's it's okay if you if you put a card in your build area but if you recycle then, it then it's it's then it's gone so okay i i don't actually i mean i don't know because i haven't done this i haven't played on this interface but i just checked that a card right. in my build area could be accessed okay uh i do want to keep that I will check the other in a second because I think. So currently I only have four resources. Yeah, I do not see any way to get a card back that I've recycled. I, I, I chose a card I knew I was going to recycle and then. I need to. This is the yeah, thing. That's once like a, once a card has been recycled, it's pretty it's it's pretty clear that you, you can't undo that okay so i do want to build this i do want to build that this is getting recycled i know that because that's not built and you don't care do you carry any cards over to the next round the cards will carry over if they're in your build area they will carry over for the rest of the game oh okay. but but your is when you produce resources you need to have a card in your build area that has a spot for that resource or it will go onto your card or onto your uh oh so you don't necessarily card. have to complete the whole card nope you uh, can you can take as long as you need over the course of the game to complete okay. the card but you but when you acquire a resource if you don't have a place to put it it will go onto your card to become crystallium you can, so you can't if you if you acquire a green and you don't have a spot to build uh, to use that green uh science okay when you acquire it it will go on to your card and then all you can do with it is turn it into crystallium at the gotcha. five to one rate you won't be able to later put it onto a card that requires a green i understand okay so, that's making that's making much more sense now that then I can do that. Um, that was kind of a mistake. Why did I do that? Oh, 
Oh, and actually I did forget another uh, another rule, which we can we can go over in more detail when we're going through the production phase. But there's a bonus for having what's called supremacy, which is acquiring the most of of each resource. Oh, okay. Uh, which we can go over as we go through those. Okay. Uh, I didn't plan this very well. All right, I think I, I did a thing. I don't know. <laughs> uh, place your resources on your development under constructions. Where? How do I do that? So you can drag them oh. from the little little cups onto, yeah. and even after you've done that, you can still recycle the cards that are on your uh, on your board. You are allowed to recycle a card that has resources on it, so be careful because you're usually not going to want to do that. Right. It will just discard those resources, but you are always allowed to do that if you decide at any point in the game to abandon a project and just okay. recycle it. You're always allowed to do that, even if it's something that you've started now early in the game and then decided later <coughs> to abandon. Cool. Um, I... Oh, I did not plan that well. I do that. It's definitely a little thickier than uh, some other seven player drafty games. Yes, uh, but yes, it is. <laughs> I like it. I like it so far. I like it. Yeah, I should I should do that. And then I will have that. Okay. I probably ended up keeping too many in my build area, but that's okay. Yeah, I think I did too, but so, so what happened here was we, so we've just gone into the production phase and we, so we've both produced materials, which are the yes. great. Um, and you, so I produced two materials and you must've produced more than two materials because you got the supremacy bonus. Yeah. My starting thing is three. Okay. So you should have three materials in your little cup. Yep, I and, dragged them down to my cards. And I don't know if you saw this, but you also have two, or you also got one of the little blue tokens. The, I did. I got a financier. Yep. And you got that because, so you see how there's a little blue symbol right above this little cup? Yes. That is That indicates that having the supremacy bonus for this uh, resource gets you that symbol. Okay. If you have the supremacy bonus for energy, you get a general, the red symbol instead. If okay. you have the supremacy bonus for science, you get to choose one or the other. Makes sense. And then it goes, and then for gold, it goes back to financier. And then if uh, for exploration, it goes back to general. All right. So awesome. I am completing my wind turbine. Very nice. And now we go on to the energy production, which. I completed the Zeppelin. Is that right? You got oh, three yeah, black yes, energy. Right. Wow. That's impressive. And I completed the airborne laboratory. Wow. Ah, ah, ah. That was very good. <laughs> I like how the, uh, instead of sending move to server, it's a sending move to the Supreme leader. <laughs> Oh, and I just realized that I can actually see your starting. Uh, actually, I can see yeah. all of your. Yeah, that's actually cool. It shows income. you everything. That's really you nice. You've got a that's lot exactly. of stuff so far. Holy. Yeah. Heck. So I I recycled uh, enough energy so that I was able to build a second card using my income from my first card. So I built the first card using the income from my basic yeah, I have. Built I have. And a, then use the first card to build the second card. Yeah, I have one other card I'm going to be able to make this turn. So the yeah. downside is that I have now produced three, uh, three science, but 
I only have a home for one of them. So the right. other two get placed on my uh, my player card and they will now be converted five to one for Crystallium. Right. And I have to choose a financier or a general for my science supremacy bonus. I don't really have a preference right now because I don't have anything that's giving me bonuses for one or the other. What? I did not earn any money. Uh, okay, and yeah, I don't either. So we're just skipping gold. And I did earn an exploration, but I don't have anywhere to put it. So it just goes straight to my player card. All right. And now we draft. Mm -hmm. So that was round one of four. Yeah, actually, I really like the implementation of showing everybody's income. Yeah, this is really nice, actually. It's, I'm not, it's actually not hard to see. So when you're playing the physical game, you see how it's stacked on the left where the cards show just the bottom bit that shows you yeah. what the income is. That's exactly how you stack the game, stack the cards when you're playing the physical game. Right. Um, what I like about the implementation on the right that is different, obviously, from the physical game is that it combines the colors together. So, for example, on mine, I'm earning two materials and three science, but the two science from my per my player card and the one science from my airborne laboratory are separated, right? Because right. The, that's how they're printed on the cards. And this could eventually be stacked up to here. And I might have to figure out how many science I've earned by counting, okay, there's yeah. two here, there's one here, then there's however many more up here. But right now, if I want to look over here and just see I'm getting two materials, one energy, three science, no gold, and one exploration. Like, I can just see it at a no, glance. This is, this is nice. I like yeah, this a lot, it's, actually. It's really, that's a really nice, uh, nice benefit. Let's see. Have a so, great night, Jedi. Thank you so much for hanging out. Bye, Jedi. Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> These are definitely not the cards I was looking for. <laughs> Who shoveled these? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, well, that's gonna be tough, but sure. This is a terrible choice. Oh wow! Sure. Terrible choice. Oh, that helps a little, I guess. I can see what you're saying about these cards. <laughs> right? So if during the material round, you build a card using materials that gives you materials, do you get those materials? No. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. It's a, it's a very frequently asked question. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Oh, 
Pokemon heavy with the cards that give you blue. I mean, <laughs> did you see the first card I drafted? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see it. Yes, I do. I'm not, not uh, surprised by that, I guess. Where is all the energy? <laughs> There's Where no energy in these cards. The no energy at all. These are just low energy cards. Yeah. It was funny because when I, when I was unboxing the game and I saw the production track, I was like, well, this is a thing. I don't know what this means yet, <laughs> but this is a thing. <laughs> but now it makes sense. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, I actually want to build that, but I really shouldn't. Um, oh, these are not useful. So anyone in chat played It's a Wonderful World, either solo or multiplayer? Yeah, let us know. I know this game has a really has a been really popular among the solo crowd. I'm honestly really looking forward to trying that. I've I've never played it solo, and I definitely like the campaign mode has been calling to me. There's a little yeah. part of me that wants to play it on stream, but I also you should. I'm, well, the part the problem is that it's so like it would be all spoilers. I mean that's right? true, but but you know what though? Like I've seen I've seen other you know campaign games played on stream, and the great thing is too, especially with you know you streaming across all platforms, you can always save the vods, and if people don't watch them live, you know they can always watch them recorded after the fact. Yeah, you know, when true. once they have a chance to have gotten through that point in the campaign. So I think it'd be good content just to have for your company, just to have up there is yeah, having a playthrough of it. Because then I, some I people well some people do don't care about spoilers, or some people might not be able to get their hands on the game and they just want to watch a watch a cool game get played. I don't know. That's 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 a very good point. And there are certainly games uh, of other other types of content. Like I I have watched uh video game streamers who play games that I I enjoy, but for whatever reason, may never play myself. Right. Where I don't care that it's being spoiled because I would rather watch them play it than play it myself. And for whatever reason, whether it's just not the type <laughs> of game that I am physically good at, so I will not enjoy playing it, but I enjoy experiencing it. Yes. Or, yeah, I mean, for a variety of reasons, I may never play it. Um, let's see. What plan do I have for those? Of course, there's always that. Yeah, this is nice. I like this a lot. Awesome. <laughs> I'm probably going to end up getting a subscription to this too, just so I can have other people play with me again. It'll be <laughs> fun. But well, I mean, we can certainly do this again sometime. I, oh, I would love to. I mean, obviously, we're going to do it again on well, Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> but you can do that. it again a different time. Yeah, and I like I I. I'm already looking forward. Now that I have a concept of the game, I'm already looking forward to teaching this to my game group here at home. Great. Um, because this, yeah, like this, this is how I like to learn games, to be honest. I hate reading rule books. <laughs> if, some, <laughs> if, if I could have some, it, it's funny as a content creator to say that, like, because like, obviously people come to, you know, to content creators to learn how to play games. But man, I hate reading rule books. In my <laughs> game group, 
I am the last person to read a rule book. The other, like my wife or our friend, I have read the rule books and teach, like teach the games as we go. Cause my, like, I can't, I, I, I've never been diagnosed with anything, but I have a very short attention span or like, just like folk, not attention span, but like focusing is hard at times mm -hmm. and like reading pages and, and you know, sometimes rule books are not as oh, succinct yeah. as they could be. Absolutely. <laughs> like this, <laughs> when you te taught me this game, it took me five minutes to understand the concepts of the game. That I'm sure the so rule happy. book is like 30 pages long <laughs> or something. I don't know if it's that long, uh, but like. It's not quite that bad, but it's, it's but, eight. Uh, okay, and but, actually, that includes the solo scenario. That's actually so really good. Six, six pages yeah. of rules. That's not too bad. But you know, you understand what I'm saying. You've opened Absolutely. rule books. Absolutely. Oh, you're I just completely like, do. Like, I completely do. My best example of a rule book that is way too long and complicated for a game that really isn't is Scythe. <laughs> Scythe looks yeah. like this really super complicated game, and the yes, rule book is gigantic. Yes. And it boils down to doing one of four actions per turn. And I'm just like, Scythe is not that complicated. <laughs> but yep, the rule book so and the board makes it look so complicated. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it definitely does. It's so funny. It's There are an awful lot of games where it takes a long time to do a teach. But then mm -hmm. once you actually know how to play, it's surprisingly, like, individual turns are surprisingly quick and easy. Yes. Uh Oh, that's disappointing. Somewhat poor planning on my part, but. Yeah, I, I, and honest, honestly, the, I mean, generally speaking to learning games this way, like digitally, where if the things allow you to do certain things and not other things that you can't do, and you're not trying to figure that out based off your knowledge of the rules, helps a lot too. <laughs> what happened here? I thought I finished this. Oh. Does it not have a black square on it? Yeah, it's. I can't actually tell. It's hard to tell, isn't it? it yeah. The, oh, like, actually, it, you can. If you click on it, it shows what's missing. Yep. It's, it, it is missing black. Yeah, I can get it on the next. How can? Where do you see that? It's if you if you click on it, it zooms in. Oh, does it? Yep. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, but it's telling me that you still have resources to use. Oh yes, I do. I apologize. Oh, you're fine. Oof. So yes, now it's complete. You are crushing me on supremacy bonuses. But I'm getting a lot of science. Yeah, yeah. You got all the science. I don't have any science. <laughs> Who needs science in our nation's <laughs> leadership? Oh. <laughs> I just have lots of production <laughs> material. It says I'm Oceana, but apparently I'm 1960s USSR over here. <laughs> I just have all the materials. <laughs> Now, one of my favorite things about this game is that they, I mean, it really could have been a fantasy setting and that's, it wouldn't have been unusual, I guess, for it to have been. Right. 
in a fantasy setting. Um, hold on one second. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, like that's sort of like the default, I guess, for a lot of things like this. But I love that they chose to put it in this sort yeah. of dystopian future setting instead. Same. And the artwork is terrific. And the card names are mostly dystopian future, but some of them are a little tongue in cheek. Right. And like I have the propaganda center. <laughs> Uh, some of them, by the way, do have rewards. Uh, sorry, not rewards, but uh, your production amount that's variable depending on the number of a certain icon that you have built. Oh, that's in. cool. So I, that's actually the propaganda center that I have right now pulled up on stream is one of those. Yes. So it actually earns you gold for each of the... Uh, I don't know what that's called, but the yellow symbol uh, that you have constructed. And this is that card. This card has that symbol in the bottom right corner. So when you, when, if I were to construct this card, it would earn one gold on this, on that round, because I only have, I don't have any yellow symbols constructed so far otherwise, but if I had other ones, then it would earn more. Gotcha. So. For example, uh, why can't I see? Oh, I can only see your draft. Sorry. I should. Be, yeah. I, was, I was thinking when I clicked on you that I'd be able to see what you had built. Do you have other cards with that symbol built on uh, yours? With which symbol? It, the yellow one that kind of looks like a... like the. I have a card in my hand that shows that symbol. I don't have any built. Okay. All right. And so those are the cards that tend. Like they typically... Yeah. I have a card in my hand that, that shows uh, science times the those symbols. There you symbols. go, yeah. So. so and yeah, so that's how those work. You we might really those. like that card on your next turn. <laughs> we haven't seen those before, so I yeah. just wanted to point out that that's how those work. Makes sense. They also, or at least this one takes gold to build, so that could be tricky. Yeah. But since I've been talking about it, I may as well take it. Ooh, Lee Moly. Okay. So yes, I see what you were talking about. That it is expensive considering what I just took. These are some interesting cards. So one thing I've been doing fairly well so far is I have been uh, getting, I feel like I'm doing okay resource-wise. I haven't taken anything that actually gives me points. <laughs> yep, and I was just about to mention that. So there, like, you get victory points for certain cards that are just flat, at a flat rate, right? That just have points printed in the lower left corner. But then there are other cards that have multipliers, just like the ones we were just talking about, that might give right. you points, for example, for each of the green symbols or each of the yellow symbols or each of the uh, financiers or each of the generals. So those are the kinds of things that you might want to start stacking to try to, yeah. uh, to benefit more from. And the B sides of these cards change the benefit that you get from your starting. Oh, okay. uh, I actually think the B sides might just give you no starting bonus oh. no, like no victory point bonus okay because you don't get a starting oh sorry it's on me to uh to draft i thought we had, I, I thought we were already i thought i had already drafted from this set um this is this the bonus that you get from this victory point selection oh no i did okay um is no like it doesn't give you anything at the beginning of the game it's just some direction like it just gives you some some direction, some focus. Right, exactly. At the beginning of the game, but it actually doesn't give you any scoring until the end of the game. So the B side of this card, I believe, does not have any victory point bonus on it. But 
I think that might be the only difference. Okay. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I just took my first card that can actually give me points. And if I can complete it, it will be pretty <laughs> pretty beneficial. <laughs> so you say we do this for four rounds, right? Yeah, so this is okay. the third. There will only be one more after this one. Okay. We could probably just run through the rest of this because it should be pretty quick here. I, I'm doing pretty good with my turns, so. I mean, I'm making poor decisions, but I'm making decisions. Did you just take the one I was going to take? <laughs> Maybe. Did. No. <laughs> I was going to take that one for money and the, <laughs> oh, no. It's all gone horribly wrong. No. That was the one I was going to get points from. <laughs> I didn't think you'd want that one. <laughs> you don't have those buildings. <laughs> I need the money. Mm. I did it for the money. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's a fun game. Yeah, this is very fun. I like this a lot. I'm really glad you're enjoying it. <coughs> Excuse me. It is, it's definitely thicky. I, yeah. like, I generally lead towards the light to uh, medium side of things, but mm -hmm. this I mean, it's not heavy. It's just you do have to do some planning. Yeah, absolutely. The last card we're going to take. Yep. Okay. How badly overcommitted am I? <laughs>
Maybe I do that. Because I'm not going to get to that. Or that. Although I do have that. Needs that. There's no way. Okay. <laughs> I have finally made up my mind. Oh, hello. I definitely. I'm not going to try to pronounce your name, but welcome uh, to the stream. Hello there. Have you played It's a Wonderful World? We are just starting the production phase of round three. So we're a little over halfway through the game and essentially feels like we're almost at the end at this point. What just happened? I thought I only used one of those. Um. I definitely used two crystallium where I thought I only needed to use one. That's a bummer. I thought I'd be able to finish this on this turn. This is one of those places where having a a digital interface can be a downside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> because that means that I don't have the crystallium to use right now which I need. So now I have to decide, finish that or finish that. I think it has to be that. No, so I won't earn that this round. We'll earn that. Yep. Did you end up recycling that card that was? Yeah, oh. the card that I started draw started building in the first round. No, no, the card that had um, it was, it was uh, there was a card. I swear there was a card that was something to do with the um, material buildings. But maybe I, maybe I'm misremembering. I thought I saw a card that was. I thought you drafted the card that I that I was looking at for material buildings, but maybe I'm wrong. It's possible. Yeah, who knows? When we were talking about cards that where you said I drafted the card that you wanted, and I said yeah. I, I took it for the money. 
I thought maybe... I'm almost certain it was it was yeah. a card that I recycled the, because the, the, King the card Solomon, that I took King Solomon's Mines. Yeah. 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 I did recycle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. That's fine. I was just I, I it's cool. If you actually click there's a Discord pile towards the top left. It actually oh, allows yeah. you to look through that, which is yep. nice. Because some places that's... some interfaces don't actually let you look through the Discord pile. So that's and this cool. is that is, I mean, it's specifically allowed in the rules, and it's always important that a digital interface allow you to do that because if it's if the rules allow it, you really should be able like those are important things to be able to do in a digital right. interface if you're allowed to do it in the rules. All right. Fourth round and final round. And it feels when you describe it. It's like, oh, four rounds. How can that possibly be long enough? And then right. you actually play it, it and is. you're like, four rounds is enough. I mean, oh yeah. It's it's still like, wow, I, I wish that it was longer because it's such a good game. But also it's enough to to scratch the itch. Oh yeah. Um That's good. Why are all these massive point cards wanting a buttload of science? <laughs> I mean, somebody has a buttload of science. Yeah, Just not me. Just <laughs> saying. <laughs> that, that is a thing that exists. It is true. Hey, I've got a ton of material, a ton of resource, uh, energy, and a ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That was an expensive card you just picked up. Oh. Yeah, that hand had a lot of those. <laughs> Indeed. Apparently, science is how you get victory points. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Eight science. Well, That's a lot of science. This is very cool. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, there's there's a lot to think about. There's a lot of, of variance. And then there's also two expansions that add right. even like more complexity to the cards, more options. There are some things that there, there are some cards that add the ability to actually destroy some of the things that you've built, like destroy. Uh, they don't actually destroy your buildings, but they counter some of your production uh, and then like we were talking about earlier there is a campaign mode uh, in one of the in the other expansion yeah i am i am looking forward to getting this played quite a bit now that mm -hmm. i understand the rules <laughs> yeah it's funny because one of the things that i find most frustrating about reading rule books is the wanting to proofread them right. so uh so one of you know well, the thing that i used that i did for lucky duck before i was hired was proofreading the rule books and although i didn't work on this game i did work on small islands and it is such a a great experience for me <laughs> to learn a game by proofreading the rule book because i actually get to do the thing that i've wanted to do <laughs> through like most of my experience as a hobby gamer and actually proofread the rule books while yeah. reading them. Uh, I do actually love reading rule books, although I don't always love learning a game that way, but it's not because I don't enjoy the process of reading a rule book, but it's just because sometimes I find it frustrating when a rule book doesn't explain a rule or a, 
or a concept, a set of rules in a way that makes sense to my brain. Right. And, and sometimes I feel like I can figure it out. And sometimes I'm like, I have questions and they're not answered here. And that annoys me. And, and I just want to fix it. So it's, uh, it's, it's been really gratifying to have the opportunity to actually do that. I, I still really don't know what I'm doing here. I need to just make a decision. I need that. It's not here. And I need that. Which I already have, but I need more. So I'll just take that. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. I'm glad. I do think it's funny, though, like the way it's combining the resources at the top. It makes it look like I have so few, like, it, like, because the icons yeah. are smaller. <laughs> So it's yeah. like, look at all these resources. It's not, obviously, it's not actually the case, but it's really funny visually. You have big numbers. Now, are the cards that are dealt uh, separated by like round or arrow? Is it just they're all nope. shuffled together? Or they all they're all shuffled dealt? together. That's why That's I was complaining earlier, like who shuffled this? <laughs> because the distribution just seemed really off. It's interesting that they can do that with game balance wise. Because like mm -hmm. some cards, like, like especially well, here in the yeah. last round, I'm seeing some, like a lot of like multiple blue Sure. cards like yep. you know five or six deep blue or five or six seven deep green mm -hmm. whereas like if you got those in round one you could like all you're going to be able to do with that is recycle it yep or you could hold you, it to the you end can, but, you can play it and just sit on it yeah you yeah. don't have to yeah I, I, sure i do like that that it's not a you don't have to complete it that round that is kind of yep. cool too. exactly so you can start an expensive card early and then if you're able to complete it at some point well done if not you can choose to recycle it at any point like right. i gave up on a card that i started in round one at the beginning i think of round three because i couldn't complete it and i didn't want to keep trying at that point I keep butting up against the same problem.
<laughs> Let's see what we, we got going on here. Ding. This is the shorter side. I'm pretty sure this is my second too. Yeah, I tend to like start by putting the things that I know I'm building out because you it's much more punishing if you mess up on a recycle than if you mess up on a build. Yeah. I that makes that. sense. Because if you mess up a recycle, you can't undo it. You can't fix it. There's no coming back. If you mess up a if you mess up on a build, you can still recycle it. Right. Oh, what did I do? I only have three. And I need four? No. I think I just leave it. This has turned into a very quiet, thinky stream. Yeah, I, know. Here. <laughs> I know. Unfortunately, that, that is one thing that's going to happen. And it's just like, yeah. And a lot of the time I've just been like, okay, I'm just going to make a decision. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Because, yeah. Okay. So we are into the last production phase now. Yeah. Um, I don't know why it's asking me to validate. Is there something I can do? Okay. When I get there. This was not completely planned, but this is working out decently. <laughs> yeah, this was, I definitely this is messed more, mine up. This is more luck than, uh, than oh, skill. Oh, yeah. It, it happens more than I like to admit in this game. I, I just, everything's kind of falling in the way that I would like to see it. <laughs> Okay, that did work out. Only because I got enough, because of the order that I built stuff in on that right. turn, I was able to get enough extra uh, gold to make a crystallium that got me the one extra oh, energy nice. that I didn't make to build my last card. So my uh my exploration construction just turned into a crystallium which unfortunately is not worth anything at the end of the game uh -huh. yeah i have four crystalliums over here that don't do anything for me so uh, i was able to build all my cards i definitely should have mentioned that no i didn't it did honestly it didn't affect me it didn't like it, they just happened to happen i like the way it reveals the score Oh, you crushed me. Oh, huh. okay. <laughs> Off I have the option to offer a friendly rematch. <laughs> yeah, I see that at the top. Uh, I love it. That's really cool. Oh, this is fantastic. So so we did half a game of small islands, mm -hmm. but we could have definitely done, knocked out the second half in pretty quick time. And a full game of this with teaches mm -hmm. in three hours. 
We, yep. I think we can totally do both games without a teach in two. For, and we, yeah, we am just talking through what we're doing as we play. Exactly. Exactly. Like, yep. As we go, I'll be, we'll, I'll be mentioning things. I'll let you mention things. Obviously, you know, before, before at the beginning of the stream, during the stream, whenever, mm -hmm. basically, you're going to have free reign <laughs> whenever you want to do a plug for whatever you want to do. If you want to space them throughout the streams, load them at the front or the back, whatever you feel like doing. When you, you start talking, talking about, about things like x-rays that exactly, I failed to like, mention like previously. X -rays, <laughs> like, like x -rays, these wonderful orange and white ones that I have right here. Uh, I have some I have in, some orange ones here too. You can get <laughs> dual chambers or single chambers. That's right. Uh, yeah, I just got them sitting on my desk or my table here. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I think we'll be able to knock this out of the park pretty absolutely well. as so. out of the game park perhaps yeah hey there you go uh, so yeah just <laughs> just to point out looking at your scoring you got by far the most points from your financiers so yeah they were, I had they a were worth for you two points each and you had 12 of them i had a card that was one point per because they're generally speaking worth one point it looks like yep. but i had, yes, a, I had, a, I had another card default, and i did the, i did two for my generals but i only had seven right so if I had been able to get more generals, I might have been able to catch up on that because we had, like, we were only one point apart on just points that we earned on cards, right? You oh, only wow. Had one, like, you had 15, I had 14. Yeah. But That was you, one card, by the way. <laughs> you had one card the last, all 15? Yeah, all 15. It was oh, wow. one, two, three, four, five blues and two generals. Oh, wow. And I completed uh, that. That is the last thing I completed. <laughs> that's amazing. Because my cards, I got my 14 points from like five different cards. It's oh, yeah, I see out. that. They're like all, all the spread out. Um, well, so many, so not all of them, obviously, but at least in that last round there, like when I actually started looking for victory points, mm -hmm. everything was like science cards. Yep. You know, and I had all was, the science. I was earning nine science by the last round. And you Yeah, I didn't have like any science three. until the last round. So. It was really funny. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, so mine my is everything was spread out, right? Because even though like you still earned four points from generals where I only managed to earn one point from financiers. Right. And I got six points from my starting ability, which I didn't manage to build upon at all. And you didn't really build upon yours either, right? You only got I had eight. From I had eight of my starting abilities. Oh, was that your starting ability? Sorry. Yeah, one times eight. And so you didn't add to yours. No. One? You only get one point from your I get one point. Is yeah. that right? Okay. Yeah, because it's such a basic. I think yep. it's because it's such a basic. Oh, building. right. Because it's the, it's the materials, right? It's the first Right. Resort. So I had a yep. ton of them. Yep. Uh, but they're only worth but one point. But it was only worth one point each. I see. Yep. So, yeah, throughout the game, I was looking for something that would let me get more points from greens. Yeah. But because I like to build upon the one that I start with. But I couldn't find it. And by the time I think I did see one, I didn't have, I think it cost blue. Oh, yeah. And, and I didn't I didn't wind up being able to build any exploration until the very end. Same. Yeah, I so, had one blue going into that last round, but. Yeah, that was rough. Uh, so, yeah, the distribution of the cards can make a huge difference in the planning throughout. Uh, and that's No, it's certainly cool. I, I really like, and, and obviously with more plays, I think the you kind of get an idea of what the cards are going to show. Like I, I'm looking at just like my, my layout here. If I look at yours, I'm not sure if it will show the same. Okay. Yours is a little bit different. You've got some blue on, uh, on some of the yellow cards and on some of the green cards, all my blue resources came from black cards. So like I, I have, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blues across four black cards. Wow. And that's the only place I was getting blues from like in actual wow. production. But wow. <laughs> It's funny looking at your scoring, but you did get all of that 15 from one card. Yeah. <laughs> or if you was, look, look at mine, because it really is. Uh, yeah, it's all over the place. One, like two, three, one, two, five, five six, seven, yeah. six different cards yeah, for, my, for my 14 points. And your 15 all came from one card. But even if you hadn't scored that card at the end, you still would have beaten me. Yeah, by five, which is crazy to think, but. Well done. Yeah, I and the, thing, <laughs> and that's the thing about this kind of game is for me, I really enjoy playing it. And well, I mean, I like winning games, of course, but yeah, I don't 
like not winning this game does not influence no. my desire to play it again. I, I would be and more than happy to play this game again, whether I win or lose it. I'm like, that doesn't. That's the way I approach games too, especially when we're playing games like on streams and stuff like that. I it For me, it's never about the wins or the losses, who wins, who loses. It's always about just as long as everybody at the table is having a good time and we're enjoying each other's company and, you know, at the table can be virtually as well. That's what's important about games. That's why we play, be it board games or video games, is to have a good time. If you're playing a game and you're not having a good time, well, that's not the game for you. It might be, it might bring joy to somebody else, but that one's not bringing joy to you. So don't play it. And but, I'm not saying I'm not competitive, but I'm I'm not competitive in a mean spirited way. Yeah. I would rather. You're still making spread, decisions. I would that, rather spread the fun more evenly among the people at the table, and yes. like than than like me be competitive and have all the fun, and other people that, have. A well, bad experience as a result. Like, I mean, I'm a great example a, that, of that that's, was when okay we were playing Small Islands and you were placing those tiles so you made sure I wasn't getting a good ship place. Exactly. And that's perfect. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't make me mad. That doesn't make you know, that's just playing the game. But you can still, you can still make, you can make competitive choices and not quote unquote be like, I need to win this game yeah. to have fun playing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, and, yeah, or to deliberately make mean choices just to reduce someone else's fun for right. no other purpose yeah. no oh i'm absolutely with you on that so no this was great and honestly this like this is a good implementation of this game i'm impressed as well i really am this was well done um i'm looking forward to playing this again on saturday me too me too that's gonna be a lot of fun i'm really looking forward to it thank you, you on the stream yeah yeah thank you so much for having me on lucky duck if anybody is still, if you're watching on Twitch or if you're watching on YouTube and you're watching on Facebook, please go to twitch.tv slash lucky duck games en. Click that follow button. Uh, I know they were very close to that 50 mark. I'm going to so refresh awesome. it here. And we are currently sitting at, if it would load, it's not loading the rest of the page. That. I don't know why it's not loading the rest of the page. It's loading the video. Oh, here we go. 46 followers right now. Oh, we're on almost Twitch. there. So if four people who are watching on Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube go to twitch.tv slash lucky duck games en and click that follow button. Uh, if you have a if you have an Amazon account, you can link it right to Twitch. Super simple. Uh, and get Lucky Duck Games to that 50 follower mark. Thank you. If you would like to see Bree and I play more of this. Go to twitch.tv slash rolling with rock and consider clicking that follow button because Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, we'll, we'll be playing full playthroughs of both Small Islands and It's a Wonderful World, uh, non-teaching games, and that will be part of the greater 24-hour marathon of Tabletop Live Network. I am very much looking forward to that. I am too. I, I, I think it will be a wonderful, wonderful time. And a wonderful world. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me on the stream tonight. And thank uh, you so much for having me, Bree. I really appreciate it. And to uh to everyone who's still out there in Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch land, thank you for sticking around. And thank you for yes. for watching us play. And definitely come join us again on Saturday if you're interested in watching a full playthrough. And we will uh we'll see you soon on the next stream. Bye friends. Bye. Thank you.